righty. Here we go. Technology be our friend. I feel like we always Hi, have like a mantra. I know, hello, right? Hello. Gotta catch up with that delay. All right. I'm gonna refresh as well. Yay, we got lots of lots of eyeballs already. That's awesome. And I see us. There All we go. Right. Yay. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. Oh, we've hey. got some, uh, some Colorado people saying, go Nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that. We're up against the NBA Finals tonight. Oh, so. Wait, is there a game tonight? I think there is, right? Yeah. yeah I is. don't know. The Celtics, the Bruins, the Red Sox, the Patriots. We're not going to talk about I mean, I'm a Warriors fan, but I am from Miami, so I am a Heat fan. So sorry, yeah. Nuggets fan. I'm going to. I've switched to the heat for the NBA finals. So. <laughs> just let us know in the comments um, if you guys can hear us okay. I always like to just make sure, although I feel like by now you would have told us if you can't. But then I can breathe a sigh of relief. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you guys so much. I love seeing where everybody is from. We've got Florida, Arizona, Minnesota, upstate New York, people from all over the place. Yay. And somebody oh. just got their glitter all the things t-shirt in New Mexico today, Jen. <laughs> a busy, a busy shipping week for for Creative Chick Studio over here. Busy, busy. <laughs> I know I'm excited to get my uh my crafty goodies I ordered too. Yours might not be in the mail yet because you got extra surprises going in there. Oh. <laughs> okay. Soon, soon, Monday. Yeah, Monday. Soon. Monday. Oh, there's someone else, another heat fan over here. Yay. Bye. I know. I'm like, I feel like I'm gonna have to have another window. I have to have three windows, one with the, the game. The game's probably not till like 5.30. But. <laughs> um, and Chari is helping us in the comments tonight. Yes. I know she's already linked up the um, link to the Create With Us page where you guys can get the handout if you haven't already. Um, and it is also at the bottom of the screen. And I actually printed it tonight. Look at me. Hey. 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 <laughs> well, this is I don't, what the handout looks I don't, like. Um, I don't often print my handouts. This is like a, a specialty. Yeah. Specialty can, for me. You can download this. Um, and Shari put the um, the link in the comments. We also have it in the graphs down below. But this is amazing. And you can download it not only for this class, but for all of the Create With Us classes that we've done going back the past couple of years. Um, and you'll once you download it, if you don't have it yet, you're going to see it's such an amazing resource. And we're going to be using this uh, to help us create along with Jen today. Yes. And we, if you're new to Create With Us, um, we offer these free mini classes around the Lawn Fawn releases. So um, we just had our mini May release. And so that is what spurred the inspiration for this class. And then we have a June release coming up and we'll have another Create With Us class. So we always kind of do one or two Create With Us classes uh, based around the um, releases. And then to coordinate with the free mini classes, I also offer paid online classes. So you get even more ideas and different coloring guides to join us for those. So lots of fun stuff. Yes, and we'll make sure, uh, Shari, will link you over to Jen's classes as well, which are amazing. And I saw somebody comment a little bit earlier that they had been crafting with you last weekend. So that's really exciting. Yes, last weekend was the Creative Journey Art Retreat. It was so much fun. Oh, my gosh. We did 13 cards in 13 hours. Oh, I love that. There should be like a, it reminds me of those, like a, when it's like a jogathon or something. Yeah. It's a cardathon. <laughs> it felt like a cardathon, <laughs> but um, it was actually really funny at the end of day one. So we had done six hours. We only completed one card. Oh my goodness. Because <laughs> we did all the coloring and all the Oh, like, I see what you mean. Yeah. But it sounded so funny because it's like we hung out together for six hours and we only had one card to show for it. So we made up for it on the second day. 
Um, oh, we've got some people asking when the June release is. So the June release is June. I'm looking at my calendar over here, 22nd. And the Inspiration Week starts June 14th for that. So it's coming up really quick. And we are so excited about this release. It's so much fun. It's really, really cute. I hope you guys are going to love it. So we'll have intro videos and design team cards every day from the 14th leading all the way up to the release on June 22nd. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And the, the June release, the summer release is always my favorite. And if you don't <laughs> know, I'm a mermaid. There are no mermaid stamps, but this mermaid is very happy. Yes. There may be things related to where mermaids live. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> All right. We're going to flip the screen. You guys will be able to right. see my desktop, but you'll still be able to see Kelly and I. And again, we just like these fun get togethers where we can chit chat and have fun and create a couple cards. Um, I know it's a Friday. Some of you might have had a long week and this is going to take all the guesswork out of card making for you. You just have to follow along and just have fun. And we always encourage you guys, if you don't have all of the same supplies, if you have none of the supplies and you just want to get crafty with us, that's totally okay. Um, and again, if you're inspired to get the supplies later, you'll always be able to come back to this video, come back to the handout and get all of the awesome information and do it at your own pace. So yay. <laughs> Yes. And that's what today's all about. It's about creating together and just having a fun time together chatting and, um, and just being able to enjoy this hobby that we all love so much together. So I'm really excited to be here with you guys. And uh, Jen's going to start showing us these incredible, beautiful cards we're going to be making. Yay. So we, like I said, we're going to be doing two different cards with the Just Plain Awesome uh, stamp set. I actually just taught some in-person classes in May. I was at Scrappy Chic in Michigan and the Paper Craft, um, Paper Craft Clubhouse in Connecticut. And I was chatting with everybody about how in my next life, I want to be one of my kitties because they live a very spoiled lifestyle. <laughs> but if I can't be one of my kitties, I want to be a lawn fawn mouse in my next life because they literally have the most fun ever. And just when you think that they've done all the wicked fun things that they can do, we now have them flying paper airplanes. I mean, come on, Kelly. How do you guys come up with these ideas? I know. I mean, doesn't that sound like so much fun to be able to fly in a paper airplane? <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. I always, I always have like, do you ever have dreams of actually flying? Like where you get the sensation? No, I've had them before. I, I know people that have cool dreams. You know, I have never had a positive dream, which is odd. I either oh. have nightmares or like dreams that are either frustrating or distressing. <laughs> I don't oh, know. No. Should I like, I should probably be talking to someone about this, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, for some reason I've always been that. And then I'll hear about people that do like cool stuff. Like, um, they fly in their dreams and they do all this stuff. I had a friend that learned how to control her dreams. It was called like lucid dreaming. Ooh. So, I know. I wish I did something cool. I'd be curious to know like who has actually flown in their dreams before. Like I wonder, you know how they say dreams mean something? I wonder what that means. Yeah. Like I just can remember I've had a couple dreams where I feel like the G's in my stomach from being in the air. And one time was actually kite surfing. Like I love watching the kite surfers on the ocean. And when they hop a wave and then they literally get air that like freaks me out, but yet excites me. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, the, welcome to create with us. You never know what we're going to try. Yeah. I know. I, I like hearing about people's like weird dreams. I think it's interesting or how it's interesting to me that there's weird dreams that a lot of people have, meaning like uh, the dream where your teeth fall out. Have you heard of this? This is like a common. No. Dream. Yeah, it's happened to Mike quite a few times. I guess it's a common dream that a lot of people have their teeth fall out. And I was like, what a strange, like common that is strange dream to have. Like, it's, it's interesting to me that we would have the same kind of dreams as each other, you know? Yeah, that is interesting. Huh. Anyways, well, I started to take <laughs> out all the pieces for my online class. So fly and realize I was like, this doesn't look accurate. So these are the <laughs> correct pieces for class tonight. Um, whenever I do any of our online classes, whether they're the free create with us classes or my online classes, 
I tend to color with Copic markers, but I always share a swatch list with you guys because we want you guys to be able to use what you own, what you have. So if you have Copic markers, maybe you have similar colors, you might not have the exact colors, that's okay. If you have another brand of alcohol-based markers, that's okay. If you're gonna use colored pencils, that's okay. If you're gonna use watercoloring, that's okay. Everything's okay. We just want you to create. Um, and I am starting to do swatches of the ink pads that I'm using. Um, I often am using either Lawn Fawn inks or Distress inks. And I think that this is helpful for you guys because, again, there are so many different inks out there. Um, I've recently become obsessed with Butter from Lawn Fawn. It's been out forever, but I love it. It's such a beautiful, soft yellow that I just kind of overlooked all this time, but we're going to have fun with it tonight. Yes, and we're right. also going to use Minty Fresh and Fresh Lavender. Grace from the design team has been using butter a lot too. Um, so oh. it's like butter's having its like, we're so butter's busy. having its like party. It's day in the, it's day in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of uh, questions. Number one, there are a lot of people who, uh, who have flown in their dreams before. So I think that's super, super cool. Awesome. We're all flying like, together. Their dreams. Um, and I think that's interesting. We also have a really good idea that somebody would like to have a poll question idea. Um, what retired stamp set people would like to see return. So oh, gosh. you want to like put a couple of those and we could do a little, like a little vote. Maybe we could vote between three of them or something. Shari. I was going to say, I'm sure Shari has some good ideas because we see rumbles of it a lot um, on social media of the sets that people want like admit one um yeah what is the set with the uh, mailbox oh you've got mail you've and got mail I think the other one that we've that we get a lot of requests for is the chalkboard one we get a good apple we get that one a lot oh yeah for mm -hmm. teacher yeah yeah oh a lot of people a lot of people's teeth have fallen out in their dreams as well. <laughs> <laughs> and also I had some I saw I think like the comment went away but I did see Rebecca saying hi oh there she is oh hi Rebecca Rebecca's in New York that's why she's not joining us today so we we miss I miss you big time Rebecca I'm very lonely in this room without you here so <laughs> that actually means that Rebecca's an east coast fawny right now if she, that's true in New York Oh so my gosh. You're like an honorary East Coast Fawny for a few days, Rebecca. I never even thought about it. The fact that we actually are all like born on the East, like we're all East Coast people. Yeah. Originally. That's funny. <laughs> so funny. Um, and then the other tip that I always give um, in my online classes is because we don't want to spend the time um, stamping and die cutting together, although that would be fun because it would help the time pass faster. Um, but just to make the class run more smoothly, we have you pre-stamp and die cut all of your pieces that we're going to use tonight. And this is a trick I got from um, Mona Toth, who's on our design team. And um, she just had showed, this was years ago, um, adding your images to a piece of tape, uh, low-tech tape, and then this will give you more real estate to hold on to when we get to coloring. So I like to use the Spellbinders uh, Best Ever Craft Tape. You can use washi tape, uh, post-it tape, whatever works um, for you. When I'm creating on my own in my studio, I get this question a lot. When I'm creating on my own, I do stamp, color, then die cut. But again, for the sake of class time, it's um, a lot easier to kind of have this prep work done ahead of time. Yay, Shari just did um, her little poll for Lawn Fawn. I, had to, I just quickly voted. I had to. I want the You Got Mail. I want that mailbox back. Yeah, that's a good one. Especially with special delivery that came out. Oh, and so lovely. That's an original release one. I like See, it. See, I had a feeling she'd think of some good ones. Yeah, it looks like we can only pick four on the polls. I did want to note, somebody was asking about something. This is similar to butter. So I just want to show you, this is butter. This is sugar cookie. So it's kind of like a browner version. Sugar cookie has a little bit more brown in it. Actually, somebody in my in-person class um, used it in place. And, and sunflower is much brighter. This one's uh, lemonade. Somebody was oh. asking if lemonade would be a good substitute. You can see it's much more yellow. Yes. So I mean, I think anything will look nice, but yes. just, just to give you a little comparison, if you don't have butter, that's kind of the ones that are the closest to it there. 
And I see that my friend Stacy is here. So I have to give a shout out. Um, my friend Stacy and I went to college together. She's part of my chosen family. So since Stacy is here, that means my niece Drew is here. So I'm so excited that Stacy and Drew are going to be creating with me tonight, even though we can't be together in real life. So hi, girls. Um, and Stacy, to answer your question, you want to be using your Lawn Fawn Jet Black when you're using alcohol-based markers like Copics, which I was just gonna mention. So thank you for asking that. All right, so we're gonna get started. I am gonna be following the coloring guides and these coloring guides are in the downloadable handout. So they are helpful to have um, near you while you're creating with us tonight. But if you don't have them, have that downloaded, that's okay. You can always um, just follow along. And the mice have been doing a lot of things. So I keep switching back. Sometimes we have gray mice and sometimes we have brown mice. Your mice could be any color that you want. Um, but tonight I'm gonna be doing brown mice and I wanted them to be fairly, um, a fairly light in color. So I'm gonna be using E33 and E21. And I am gonna be shadowing with E33. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. And while you and, zoom in, we had one more question. I think yes. people are trying to pull out their supplies. So, oops, I'm dropping things. This one's Minty Fresh. Next one is Merman, then Mermaid, and then Kitty Pool. I Minty mean, I mean, Fresh is more green and very light. Green. Yeah, and very yeah. light. Kitty Pool is more blue and very light. And then Merman and Mermaid are kind of in the middle of that. So yeah. I just wanted to show you those colors. Just that way you can pick from your stash and see what might look nice. And you totally can use whatever you want because what I wanted to mention is nobody is ever going to compare your card to my card. Um, I'm here on Cape Cod in Massachusetts. Nobody's going to bring your card wherever that you deliver it to and come on to Cape Cod and knock on my door and say, excuse me, can I compare Kelly's card to your mm -hmm. card, please? Because if it's not exact, I don't want it. Like nobody's ever going to do that. So use what you have. And we'll see all the different fun cards, um, which reminds me, I need to make another grass that shows that hashtag. I don't think, yeah, uh, I yeah. don't have that. But if you guys are creating with us tonight, please make sure um, when you're sharing your cards to tag Lawn Fawn, you can tag me, Jen Cherkis, um, but use the hashtag LF create with us. I know Shari will put that in the comments um, and that will help us find all of your fun cards because we love to see what you're creating and all the different color combos you're going to be using and that's part of the fun as well. All right, so we're going to start with E33 and I am going to start doing the shadow on all of the mice and then we'll go back and we'll blend each mouse individually. Now these guys are super teeny. So if you've had a long week and you just wanna color them one color, that's totally okay. Um, but when I teach classes, I like to give you as much information as possible as I can give and you can take it or leave it. So I know these guys are little, but um, they do look nice when you add a little dimension to them, but you can totally just use one color as well. And a lot of the times people ask, how do I know which side I'm gonna shadow? I personally don't stress about where the sun is, what time of day it is, or what season it is. I just am gonna choose one side and then the crevices. And so in this instance, with these guys that are flying to the right, I don't wanna shadow their faces, so I'm not gonna shadow the right. I'm gonna shadow the left and then the crevices. And then the single guy that's in the airplane and he's flying to the left, I'm going to shadow the right because very rarely do you want to darken their faces unless maybe you're doing like a spooky Halloween card or something. Um, and so I pick one side and then the crevices. All right. Any questions, Kelly? That um, Not so far. Someone needed the download, but we got a link for that. Someone also said yay to Kelly Marie and everyone else who just put on the reading glasses. We should have these in the supply list, I think. <laughs> Oh, I probably should put that in. I remind everybody to refill their markers. So we should yeah. be like track down your readers. 
I know. Track down your readers. Where are oh, they? Oh, oh. I just got stronger ones, so I'm good to go here. Although they're kind of like, you know, when you get stronger glasses and you're like, whoa. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then we had two questions come through. Have you ever, ever colored the mice in rainbow colors? And that sounds really fun. Recently, there was a card by Elise where she actually stamped these paper airplane mice on light colored pattern papers and then die cut them. And, and she didn't add any coloring to them. And it looked- Oh, I remember seeing that. That was so cute. I never would have thought of doing it. And it looked really, really cool. So I would suggest giving that a try because I think that's really neat. Um, and someone says they saw a comparison of some of the sets, but they want an updated one with all the ABC sets. That's a really good idea. I'm going to write that down because um, we haven't done that in a long time. I'm going to write video comparing ABCs. It's been a long time since we did that because we haven't made an ABC set until the Henry Juniors in a really long time. So we'll definitely uh, take a look at those. If you are curious about what might fit on each one of our the product pages, if you go to lawnfawn.com and you search the ABC sets, that we do have the height of quite a few of the letters. So you could kind of see what might fit better. Um, you can also always email us at info at lawnfawn.com and we can always help you out with a more specific question if there's like a specific stamp set we'll just test it out here for you so that's something that we can do as well yeah. um and then shari let everyone know the smallest abc set is herald abcs it is and that was our very first one too <laughs> i just saw aaron just said your nails are naked jen and they are they were chipped so bad so i actually just took all the polish off this afternoon and i didn't have time to paint so <laughs> naked nails naked nails um, so I'm just going through and shadowing each of the mice, um, and then we'll go back and we will blend. But like I said, I'm shadowing the opposite side of the way they're facing. And then I'm kind of doing crevices under chins, under the scarves, just little dabs here and there. And on my coloring guides, if I can pull my coloring guides up, um, you'll see, I show you guys um, like step one, step two, and then step three. So it really helps break down. Even if you're using different colors, you'll know where to put the shadow and kind of the steps of filling it in. So just so you guys know, because I know we, we do a lot of chatting during Create With Us, which I love. Um, but we do dive much more into coloring um, in my online classes too. So if you want to learn more, and I'm also very happy to answer any questions tonight as well. Um, but yeah, and it just started sprinkling here and I have the slider door open and it's almost summer and I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, we've been in June gloom here. It's been uncharacteristically cold here for California, but all the Californians were all happy. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, you're probably like, I'll take it. Well, I, yeah. Right. Yeah. I've heard it's going to be after that. It's going to be like record hot. So I'm like, okay. I We've actually had it. some really weird weather, like late April, it was like 70 degrees, which is so weird for us. And then, you know, it, just like last week or the week before it was like 40 degrees. Like we've had some really extreme highs and lows for this time of year. Yeah, it's going to be 63 or something high of 63 on Sunday, which oh, wow. I know that's crazy for you. Oh, but that's weird for here. You yeah. know, <laughs> Although yeah. June gloom isn't weird. We get June gloom, but we, we come up with cutesy names, us Californians. Just to make you happy. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> May gray and June gloom. So now I'm going to use E21. And this is going to, I'm only going to use two markers to color my mice. And so I'm using that E21 and I'm blending out the shadow. So I'm only blending and coloring right next to where I put that E33 marker. And because um, with alcohol-based markers, if you're dabbing it multiple times, it is going to get a bit darker than the true E21 color. Um, and so I do that until I don't see a line from the E33 anymore. And then once I get it blended out, I'm going to stay with that E21 marker and I'm just going to fill in whatever's left white with just one layer of that E21. So it's going to be nice and light because I'm not doing multiple layers. And then if there's any awkward lines, 
um, I just use that E21 and kind of flick out my marker or dab it out to just soften that line. And it just kind of comes together real easy. And then one other thing just to mention as we're coloring, um, sometimes with lighter colors, like these guys are pretty light, while my cardstock is still damp from all the blending, I sometimes will pop right back in with my dark marker, my E33, and just dab in a little bit more dimension where I originally put it, not everywhere where I originally put it, but just a little bit, just to kind of build in some definition that we might have lost because we're using such a light color. And I do this a lot with very light browns, yellows, oranges, really light pinks. Um, and I actually just leave my E33 uncapped. Um, it's not going to dry out, you know, in that sh amount of time while you're coloring. So just some tips for you guys. Are we yeah. leaving their bellies? Uh, oh no, we we just not we haven't touched the bellies yet. Just make yeah, sure. we haven't touched the bellies. We will be doing a little bit of a little something something to the bellies. All right, I got a couple of questions here. Uh, I thought this was so clever. Denise used notebook paper to die cut the paper airplanes, and then she backed them with cardstock so that they were sturdy. And that is such a good idea. So How cute! Cool. I can't wait to try that. Um, um, also someone hasn't cleaned up their desk since creative journey last weekend. And that makes me feel better because, um, as Rebecca can attest, the, de this desk is always insane. Although I did actually clean it up some today. <laughs> yeah. Mine was a mess before we went live. So yeah, understand. Yeah. And then, um, someone also wants an updated video of all the ink pads showing them in the rainbow and their color family. Um, we may, maybe I'll have Shari take a look because the most recent, uh, ink pad, we might have done that, but I can't remember when our most. Oh, recent yeah, for the video. intro video. Yeah, was so it we might rainforest. Have it might rainforest. have been rainforest. So I wonder rainforest. if we did for rainforest. Yeah, it might be the newest ink. So there might be an intro video for that. And then someone's asking, what is the name of the die that is used most often to cut a base for your card? It's the one that's stitched. So we have a couple of different ones. We have three kind of main stitched rectangle dies, we have large stitched rectangles small stitch rectangles and outside in stitch rectangles. And the large ones are the ones that have that standard size card size, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. Then the small one fills in the other missing sizes between them. And then the outside in fills in those. And we're actually using the outside in today. So you'll kind of get to see how that one's going to work. And when we do those rectangles, I'll, I'll bring the dies and kind of show them so you can see them. Yeah. If you live in my land and even Shari's land, we use out the largest rectangle in outside in stitch rectangles for a lot of our cards. I'm obsessed. Okay, so here someone says that their E21 says soft blush. So they have updated the names of these markers. Um over time and so if you have older markers like me and jen they may have the older name on them i think you just have a newer marker that has uh some of the newer names on there like e34 is now toast it used to be something else so they they've changed some of the names so um so that's why yours has a different name but it's still the same color yeah um, the then, same color my copics are um 15 years old so um you know copics are a lifetime marker they last you forever if you take care of them and so, but the color is the same, but the names have changed. Have awesome. changed yeah. yeah. But yes. The shade and everything is still the and same. And sometimes I do just want to mention because it came up recently, sometimes even the cap color will change a little bit. Like wire 14 caramel has the cap color has changed, but the ink is still the same. And that's one thing that's really nice about Copics is they are an artist grade alcohol-based markers. So they're just a really high quality and they take it very seriously to have consistency over the years. But yeah, for sure. Cause yeah, I have markers. I even have ones that I've bought at a garage sale and like that, you know, those, I don't even know how old those were and they, that all still kind of mixes and matches together. Um, someone's asking if, if we're getting dies for the party hat stamp set. Yes. On June 22nd. <laughs> so that'll be good. Happy. <laughs> All the party hats will be coming out. That's a nice hint and not even a hint. It's just a just info about the June release. You guys, uh, I'm really glad that Kelly's back. Um, if you were with us last month, she wasn't able to be here. And I'm really glad she's back because the pressure of the secrets is off. That was really 
I didn't want to give like too many secrets away, but like I knew, you know, I want, I didn't want to disappoint our peeps. So yeah, I'm glad you're back, Kelly, for many other reasons, not just that, but I mean, <laughs> um, and just to keep us, you know, uh, off going off the rails here that I'm always the one that's uh, distracting us as we're trying to color. Um, and then it looks like Drew just said that she loves lawn fun and she didn't know who, who I was. So hi, Aww, Drew. Yay. It's nice to sort of virtually meet you. <laughs> uh, Drew was able to come to crop on the Cape this year. That was like her big Christmas gift. And um, she had a blast, like played all the games, made sweet little message notes for a ton of attendees and she was taking my class and was coloring with Copics for the first time and blew it out of the park. And so we've decided that I'm just going to leave my whole business to her someday, basically. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, and then here we've got a couple other things. If someone says they've had a handful of their rarely used Copics dry up. That has happened to me as well, um, where I've had a couple just over the time. If you replace the tip, which you can buy replacement tips and they're not too expensive, that's always kind of solved it for me. So I'll I'll put some more um, ink inside and I'll replace the tip and they're br like brand new. So that same thing has happened to me. Um, and so that's a really good thing to try. And then um, there's also real quick, Kelly, there's also... Um, I don't have a lot of the Copic sketch markers, but I think in the past like year or two, there's been a little bit of a problem with some Copic sketch markers having a hairline crack in their cap. So changing the tip will not help that like because it is still going to dry out. So try to examine your caps and, and see, see if you have a hairline crack. Um, That's a really good thing to yeah. look for too. Yeah. Do you Go know on. if Copic replaces them if that happens? I don't know the logistics of that because yeah. Copic is based in Japan. So it's like, where did you buy it from? Yeah. How long have you had it? So I don't really, I don't, I don't know. know. Well, at least it might give a, yeah, it might give yeah. a, a reason, right? Yeah. Um, For the baby mouse, uh, Jen, do, do you just, do you do E33 or is he just I E33? did add a little bit of E33. Um. Because you'd use the E00 for him? Oh, you know what? On the coloring guide, I did not use E33. I used okay. E21 and E00. So, yes, I just strayed from the coloring guide. I'm so sorry. That's um, okay. I'm kind of in my... Uh, you got in the zone, that's all. In the zone, yeah. So, I did... On the coloring guide, I think I was thinking, oh, I'll make him a bit lighter. So, he stands out amongst the um, adult mouse. So what I did, and I'm just gonna bring the coloring guide up for you guys. I used E21 for the shadow on the baby mouse. And then I blended out with E00. So thanks for catching that, Kelly. Oh yeah, I just went to go color him and I was like, oh, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, no, I just was going to town with my E33, E21 I mean, yeah. combo. <laughs> I know, oh my goodness. I did that the other day. Um, I was like, I couldn't. I was like, gosh, I, why can't I blend these red? And I was just just using the wrong mark. Like, I just wasn't even the same red at all. It was like this oh. pink red instead of like a red red, and I couldn't blend it. Just wasn't paying attention. Just, yeah. uh, we have another another question here. Well, oh, Shari did link to the most recent ink video that would show the pretty close to almost all of the inks. Okay. And then somebody was giving a shout out to Thor. That's Travis here in the office. Oh, yeah. So our reels. I'm asking if he if he crafts. So Travis is a very crafty guy, although he hasn't made um, cards yet. But he actually is very crafty and has he's even cut and made like a Captain America shield for my son out of cardboard and uh, we a mashed potato cook cook off. I guess a potato off Ooh. here for Thanksgiving and a dessert off during the holidays. And he makes a like WWE wrestling style belt that you win out of like cardboard and pieces. Um, so he's very creative as you guys can tell from his reels as well. So I will tell you guys, tell him that you guys said hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's he is. He's so fun. I love watching all the fun reels and stuff you guys have been creating. Um, so we are going to do the yellow. So we've got um, a yellow scarf and uh, a couple yellow paper airplanes. And so I'm going to be using Y38 and Y21. They're pretty far on the spectrum from each other, but I kind of did that on purpose just so that we will still have um, some of that definition showing. 
again, when you have lighter colors, it's sometimes hard to keep that shadow. So I'm going to start with Y38, and it, just like we did with the E33, I'm going to add the shadow to the items. So on the two-person uh, paper airplane, the two-mouse paper airplane, I'm going to add a little shadow to the scarf on the little um, tail part of the scarf, and then a little bit at the top of the neck on the mouse. And then we have another... Um, another two person mouse, but that one's going to have a green scarf. So I'm only doing one with the orange yellowy scarf, just so you guys know. And then on this little single mouse here, the one that's facing to the left, that paper airplane is going to be um, the yellow color. So it's a little tricky for me to explain where I'm shadowing on the paper airplane. This is like when words become hard. Um, so again, that coloring guide is super helpful and free to download, but I'll do my best. Um, I'm basically going to do that whole inside sliver at the tip of the paper airplane. And then I'm going to follow along the top of the paper airplane around this little hand and along that top line. Um, and then I have the little fold over here by his tail. We're going to do just kind of an upside down V. And then we'll go along his back and on the top. And then also following that top crease. Okay, and we have a couple of questions here. Yep. Another person mentioned about their Copic markers drying out. Uh, if you heard Jen mention that there's chance that there could be cracks in the uh, cap, that might be something for you to, to take a look at and see. And if not, I would definitely recommend writing the company and see if they can, writing Copic marker and see if they can help you out. Um, and then we had, um, I think somebody mentioned that their ink was running, you'll want to make sure that you're using the jet black ink because um, that's a uh, Copic marker or alcohol marker friendly ink. You can also watercolor with this ink. Um, and um, sometimes if you've just stamped the ink and then you go to color right away, especially with yellow, you might see some bleeding. You might just need to let it sit for like you know, three, two, three minutes and let it dry. So maybe that was the issue. I think also Shari mentioned that sometimes the paper could be the issue. So depending on what cardstock you stamped on, um, that cardstock may not be accepting that ink well. Maybe it's a little bit too slick. So you could try a different cardstock. I hope that helps. And if not, please let us know. And the cardstock that we're using tonight is the Nina Classic Crest 80 Pound Smooth Solar White which is what Lawn Fawn packages for their 80 pound white cardstock. So if you've purchased 80 pound white cardstock from Lawn Fawn, that is exactly what it is. It's that Nina Classic Crest 80 pound smooth solar white. And all those supplies are listed on your handout too. But yeah, it does matter what cardstock you're stamping on because if there's any kind of coating, um, it might take longer for that ink to dry. Um, that, but this is the black ink I use all the time. And once in a while, because I have a high humidity here in the summer, once in a while I might have an issue stamping right away and quickly going over it with a light marker. But very rarely does that ever happen. Um, and then just real quick, I just saw Michelle's comment. She got her crafty gear in the mail today and she loved the colors and loves the zippered uh, hoodie. So yay, it makes me so happy. Everybody's been so patient waiting for those orders to come in. Before you get to answering any other questions, Kelly, I just want to mention, so the paper airplane that has the two mice that we didn't color the scarf, um, because that scarf is going to be green, that paper airplane is going to be yellow. So I'm going to kind of follow the same way I shadowed the other one, like that top line and the kind of underbelly of the paper airplane. So go ahead. Yeah. And I was going to mention just because uh, I had to tell myself this, the the little mom and baby mouse, only one of the airplanes is yellow. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I had to remind myself of that to make sure I, I didn't color both of them yellow. Yeah. One paper airplane is yellow on the uh, adult and baby mouse. And then the opposite one has a yellow scarf because you know i just like to complicate things yeah you know you know, know. keeping you on I your toes 
Miles was helping me die cut these today. And he's like, is that mom and Miles? I was like, he's like, where's dad? I was like, uh, he's the guy pointing the other way. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cute. Yeah. Kelly sent me a picture of her and Miles getting ready for the class tonight. And I was like, oh my gosh, you have to post that on stories. It was so cute. I know. And Cause he always comes in here and he's like, mom, he's like, I want to make a card. And I'm like, oh kiddo, you know, I'm, 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 I'm working right now. And he looks at me like, like really though yeah, like, really though is it really worth making it hard <laughs> so he comes and helps <laughs> well and I have to tell you I showed Chris the picture because it just made me smile so much and he was like he he was saying how Miles is like the perfect split of you and Mike like it's <laughs> You know, he's not like strongly one or the other. He's a very good split of both he's of a, you. It's, it's funny. Just... I always laugh because to me, he has Mike's like exact face, but just with my hair on top. So we joke. He's just. Uh, Mike. I think he has your smile too. He like does. That really. We just figured out now that he's gotten a little bit older, he has my like same dimple in his cheek when he smiles. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we both have the same little dimple. It's, it's yeah, super. it's really cute. <laughs> um, I just want to mention, because we are doing a fairly big stretch of color for blending. Um, again, because I wanted that definition to show. So you might need to do um, a decent amount of like coloring on the line of that Y38 marker to get it to blend with your Y21. And then I'll just do um, one layer of Y21 to fill in the rest. Just so you guys know, it might take a minute um, to blend out. So don't get frustrated. And it looks like Marcy was still having some issues with your ink. Marcy, um, I would definitely recommend, and, and Shari will put this email in there, is to write info at lawnfawn.com and Jess will help you out. Uh, we can either replace your ink pad or try to see what's going on because that's definitely super odd. So uh, we will always help you out here. So just write um, info at lawnfawn.com and we can get you helped out with that. Um, and, um, somebody was asking what the difference between lawn fawn cardstock and layering cardstock is. I'm not quite sure what layering cardstock might mean. Um, but I think what Jen was talking about was that our white cardstock is really good for stamping on. And that white cardstock is the same cardstock as Nina solar white. So, um, if you like to buy like big reams of it, you could go to your local paper warehouse and, um, and you could buy a big ream of that kind of cardstock. I use it for everything. I use it for my card bases. I use it to stamp on. I use it to ink on. It's like my, my go-to cardstock. I'm the kind of person who just needs like one cardstock that does it all. And, and that's that cardstock for me. Um, and then we have our different colored cardstocks, which are really beautiful, but would be hard to use your markers on because um, they're blue or pink or yellow. This is nice because it's white and you can use your markers on. I hope that answers there's a question. <laughs> I had to grab a, um, sorry that your video went away, Kelly. I had to grab a re-inker for my Y21 because we were. Oh, is that it. why it wasn't blending? That's a good yeah. tip too. Sometimes when I get frustrated, I, why don't, why aren't these blending? I realize I have to, to re yeah. it. <laughs> Give a little juice to your marker. Yeah. We were yeah. coloring a lot of mermaids this weekend and that was the color we were using. So it needed um, a little, a little love. And then as you're blending those out, Jen, yeah. um, Stephanie was mentioning that she loves the cross stitch patterns that we have for the embroidery hoop. And I don't know if you guys saw, but oh the amazing Shari created two beautiful patterns. They're free patterns that you can download and, um, and you can, um, we're going to put the link right here. Shari's going to put that in there and um, we have them on our site and they go to our embroidery hoop has that kind of like plain cross stitchable one. And it's this, these really cute, really sweet patterns that go great with this release. They're bee themed. Um, so I highly recommend checking those out. Um, and Shari has some beautiful cards that she's created with them and you can just print them right off of our site and keep them with your embroidery hoop dive for ideas. They are um, seriously so cute. So and cute. then we have um, some good information. I didn't realize this. So Gina K, um, Gina's amazing. We love her. Um, she calls 80 pound cardstock layering weight. So I had never heard uh -huh. that before, but that's a really, actually a really good way to say it. I am, I am a big fan of 80 pound cardstock. If I know people love hundred pound and ours is hundred pound. If I could make everything 80, I would, cause yeah. I like, I put so many layers and things that sometimes with all the hundred pound, it gets heavy, but um, I like 80 pound for stamping and die cutting the images. Um, I just, 
I don't know. I feel like I can color better on it. I don't know if you agree with that, Jen. Like I just like the yeah. I like I like eighty pound. I was talking about this um, at the online retreat this weekend. I don't want to overcomplicate how many white cardstocks I have in my studio. So I personally just never got into using eighty pound and a hundred pound because. Um, mm -hmm. To me, I they're similar enough that sometimes you go to grab it and you're not sure what you grabbed. Um, I do stray from you a little bit. I like to ink blend on my Distress yeah. White Heavy Stock, but but I pretty much for white cardstock I use eighty pound Nina and Distress White Heavy Stock. But I, you uh, Distress White Heavy Stock is a hundred and thirty pound, so you yeah. really can feel the difference. Um, yeah, and you don't do your stamping and Copic markering on that. That's more for like inking watercolor. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, although I will tell you, sometimes with the dyes that like um, are our larger dyes, you know, that we do the paper piecing oh, of, right. like the mermaid and the s'more. That's, it's nice that it's thick. Yeah. Yeah. If I want to Copic color those, to give detail, I do like to do that with Distress White Heavy Stock, but for the most part, 80 pounds for my yeah. card bases and for Copic coloring. Yeah. yeah. And if you buy our colored card socks, they're 100 pound. Um, our textured and our textured dot are 80 pound because they're like that specialty texture. So those don't okay. come in 100 pound. So we kind of have like this nice selection. Um, so you can kind of try different weights and see what you like. But when you buy the different color card stocks, they'll be 100. And then we have both 80 and 100 in the white. But Jen and I both tend to use the hundred to stamp a color, but there is no right or wrong answer because they're yeah. all great. And honestly, everybody has to find what works best for them, right? It's nice to hear, you know, information. Like I know Gina K does a ton of lives. Hero Arts does lives. We do lives and everybody finds their own groove. And then once I, when I always say, once I find something I like, I'm, I'm good. I don't need to reinvent that wheel. Um, and so it's just finding what, what works for you guys, you know? Um, so what I wanted to mention is um, I did not do the R20 yet on the mice. We're going to do that now. I like to let the alcohol evaporate a little bit off of their faces because I'm going to use the R20 to rosy their cheeks. And if the cardstock is still saturated and still damp from the blending, I find that that R20 marker just kind of disappears into the brown color that we just used. So now that we've given our mice a little bit of time to um, dry out and not be so damp from blending, I'm going to add um, R20 to their noses, their inner ears, and I like to do a little dab dab on their cheeks. And so because R20 is um, not super different than these browns, you do need to do a few dabs. Um, be gentle with the tips of your markers. Um, but And you can just keep dabbing until you get the rosy cheek the way you want it to look. Um, but it's definitely helpful to let that alcohol evaporate a little bit before you go to add another color on top. I know. It always reminds me of putting blush on because I'm like yeah. a... a I like over blush, you know, I, on, yeah. on myself and my critters. Same, especially like winter unts. I'm like, oh, I'll just throw a lot of blush on and then I'll look like I have color on my face, even though yeah, I, I feel like somehow out. it makes me more awake, but yeah. it probably doesn't, but you know. <laughs> it's all good. All right. So. Once you add the little rosy cheeks, I mean, my goodness. I, like I have to rosy all the cheeks. It just makes me so happy. Um, and then what we're going to do for the belly on this guy, which, uh, Kelly was mentioning earlier is I took E00, which is a really, really, really light, light brown. And I'm just going to trace the left line of his belly. And then I go over that with R20 just to add a little bit of a pinky belly, but that E00 just kind of tones the pink down a little bit. So it really kind of looks like it blends um, all together. Yeah, I really like that. I see Babs is here. There's some girls that I met at um, Firefly Farms Lawn Fawn Soiree last fall. And I believe they met for the first time at that event that Trisha hosts at her store. And they are now 
scrapbooking together somewhere else in the country. They all like flew in together to be together again. So it was so fun. They said to me that they were going to do the um, create with us tonight so they could feel like we were all together. <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, so oh, saying, oh, you got mail won the poll. I know. I saw that. Hint, hint. I'm surprised. Admit one had been our winner for a long time, but I think because we did the Ferris wheel. Yep. We've got mail's got to come out. Mm -hmm. Mail was like one of our first sets. Well, no, Say Cheese, I think, came before that. It was like a really kind of blew up. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, someone says they would like, um, they like a really heavy cardstock base, even the 110. You can get 130 pound cardstock. Um, there's the Distress Heavyweight cardstock, or I highly recommend going to your local uh, paper warehouse. Like, it used to be called Kelly Paper. Now I think it's like Kelly spicer i think kelly spicer paper a lot of people have those in their area and you can actually go and feel like the white card stocks and see if there's a weight that you like so that's the nice thing is you can just try out different things um, and if you don't have a kelly paper because i do think that might be a little bit more of a west coast thing is um, it? okay but if you don't have a Kelly paper, I would just encourage you to look for a local like mom and pop print shop, not necessarily a Staples or a FedEx Kinko's, no, no diss to them. But if you go to a mom and pop print shop, they'll be able to get a lot of different paper socks and they'll have samples on hand and they could purchase you reams. And that's mm -hmm. actually where I go. I go to our local printer and get my paper cut into card bases so that I can save time and not be doing that all of the time. Cause we all know how good I am at putting my cards on card bases, but that's a whole nother story. When I hand them out in class kits. <laughs> oh, and someone's mentioning that they're going to try to get to an event at Firefly Farms if it's happening this year. Oh, it is happening this year. Um, I don't know the date off the top of my head, but if Shari will find, um, I did post, I think I posted it in my spring date lineup. I think I posted the dates. It's like that Halloween weekend that's not Halloween. I'll be there teaching classes at the store and there'll be another lawn fawn soiree. I'm very maybe, excited. Maybe Shari can look up that date. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like officially announced yet, but I feel like I've been mentioning it. So. <laughs> All right, this is a fun green combo. I'm switching things up, branching from my YGs. Look at me going all. I remember, Kelly, when I sent these card pictures to you. Granted, it was like super late at night and they were dark and not the beautiful pictures. But you were like, whoa, different color schemes I for know. you. Like, we're not, I, like we're, I mean, we're using BG11, but we're really not doing anything teal, which yeah. is I know. I was like, I was like, should I be worried? I mean, I love it, but <laughs> yeah, like, is Jen alive or is somebody else creating these cards? <laughs> oh, I don't even know all of these retired sets. Oh, we have I another think. poll, you guys. Oh, my. What was Hello Friend? Hello Friend is like one of my, my apps. Is it the floral one? It's, um, oh my gosh, it's so good. What, talk about coloring and I'm going to find it to show you guys. It's, okay. It's all I'm, in this handwriting. It's so good. I'm going to do swimsuit season just because I have to, being the mermaid. But anyways, okay, so we are going to use G05 and G02. And so we're going to start by um, shadowing the scarf on that double mouse paper airplane um, with the G05. So same way, we're going to add a little bit on the tails of the scarf and a little bit at the top of the neck. I'll zoom back in for you guys. And then we are going to do, I'm looking at my, um, I want to make sure we're doing both the paper airplanes that are facing to the right. Yes. So the single paper airplanes that no mice are holding, we are going to do both of those green. Um, so again, we're just adding a little bit of shadow in that center fold along that top line. And then we'll do the same thing on the smaller one. All right. I'm excited to see this set. Kelly, I'm actually going to bring you up completely. Well, and wait till you see what this set is. Yeah, it's going to look really It's so old school. Yeah. Because we, I didn't, I, we didn't have, like, 
You'll have to put Back white then, paper. Can you put white paper like, behind it? Yeah, we didn't like, couldn't, we didn't, we couldn't. Back then we like. Oh, like, I loved like, this set. Yes. The different Wait, sentiments. Got to get more in the center. There we go. <gasps> I want to take my vote back. I want I know. this one back. This one's so good. You I use see... that Hello Friends speech bubble like so many times. Can you tell how much I use this stamp mm -hmm. set? It's really just stamp. It says, I'm lucky to have a friend like you. Thank you for my sending smiles across the miles, which I love, especially with Oh, my smiles. gosh. Yeah. Um, you make me smile. Hello, friend. Our friendship is forever. And if friends were flowers, I'd pick you. And like, they're these cute. And this is all like was all hand drawn hand by done from Eric. Yeah. I love so, it. Anyways, this is like a personal favorite of mine. Um, I'd have to convince Erica to bring it back. Cause she's, I think she, she like looks at the older ones and she's like, Oh, my style is different as I love this set though. <laughs> I know you'll have to like, give her like the time in these videos of when we talk about like, so she can like, I know so that, she can like, see it. Right. Yeah. Because the other one I would love is Sophie's Sentiments. I oh, love that loved one that. That's set. another one of her, like, I feel like that style's coming back to that. Um, the cursive like, yeah. hand drawn. Yeah. Again, the hand drawn sentiments. I'm a sucker for them. I've always loved her hand drawn sentiments. So I am just blending out with G02. Um, but again, if you feel like you need to add any de definition back in, while your cardstock's still damp from blending, just pop right back in with your G05 and feel free to do this. I've been doing this a lot lately. Um, the kind of the pop back in and add a little bit more. I just did it for this one. I didn't feel like I needed to on the yellow, but on this one, I felt like I needed to come yeah. back in, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I saw somebody mentioning that we're having a margarita. And oh, I, I'm jealous. I know. I'm having mango boba. And we were talking about boba today in the office. And, like, some people think it's weird. I, like, love it so I've much. never had it. Oh, you haven't? I guess it's kind of West Coast, isn't it? Yeah, guys, it is a little West Coast. I've never yeah, had Yeah, we have, boba. like, five of them within, like, <laughs> yeah. three minutes of the office. Um, but but I love boba. I think it's, I like, I think it's so fun. Um, and some people in the office just think it's weird. Like, you know, it was, like, a half and half split. Yeah. We'll, have to let us well know. I'm having very exciting um water. <laughs> well, when you come uh in September, we will get you okay, boba. All the boba. Um, so Shari just said, Jen, I don't see any events on the Firefly calendar in October. Um it's the weekend. Let me bring up a calendar because I'll know. And then you guys can at least like pencil it in. And then it, somebody Somebody was asking if it's expensive to have bases cut for you. No, it's like a whole ream is like $4. You literally get your whole life back because you're not cutting like three sheets at once. Um, so, yeah, I'll be at Firefly Farm October 26th to the 29th. Um, and again, I will teach classes in the store or you can participate in the Lawn Fawn Soiree where you get to stay at Firefly Farms Fox Forest Retreat Center. So if you want more information, um, I know Shari linked to Firefly Farm. Definitely uh, subscribe to their email newsletter. And then also um, you can subscribe to my email newsletter on my website. But yeah, it's a fun, fun, fun store. All right, so now we're going to do our purples. So let me just quickly mention... We're going to be using uh, V15 and V12, and um, pretty much everything that's left is purple. So lots of purple out there. I know I get a lot of shades sometimes, not using enough purple, um, but there's a lot of purple in this class. So speaking of purple, I don't think I've seen Brienne tonight, uh, my friend Miss Brienne. Uh, uh, some people were asking about the old sets. I did want to, you know, that you can actually still search the retired sets on our site. So if you typed in hello friend or say cheese, you'll find it. They're actually labeled retired in the upper left. hand. So yeah, corner. you can just search retired and just what's retired What's cool about that is it's, so it's still, it's still there because it shows some card samples and it'll link to the video as well. So, um, so if you like search hello friend, um, it actually doesn't link to the video for hello friend because I don't think there was a video for hello friend because it's so old. We Slacker. Didn't do Slacker, Kelly. I know we didn't, I didn't, I think I came up with the idea for, um, 
oh no, there is an intro video for this one. The intro video idea came a, a, a couple releases into Lawn Fawn's existence. So not everything has, has a video, but there is an intro to Hello Friend. I, I'm assuming the video is is a little more amateur than how they are now. Um, but uh, but that video is from 12 years ago. So, um, but anyways, what's nice about that is if you own the stamp set already, you can still go and get the inspiration that you might be looking for to use your set. Yay. And if Lawn Fund ever came back with it, then we could go back to that too. Exactly. Yeah. Um, although maybe I would make a new intro video, but uh, yeah. I did want to mention in the coloring guide, you don't have the mama and baby with the purple airplane colored. I just want to make sure I am supposed to color. I think you have them separate because there's the yellow version. Oh, I forgot. I think I got all confused because remember what happened with these cards? Yes. Well, and also because that's the same, it's the only one that has that same image twice. Yes. You know? Yes. So thank you. So the mama and baby with the yellow scarf has a purple airplane. Okay. And you're going to shadow it in the same places that you shadowed the yellow paper yellow airplane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry about that, you guys. Well, no, it's, it's actually very easy to. Yeah, I know. But you know me, I do try to cover everything, but Sometimes, sometimes things happen. Um, and our little hearts did. I, oh, good. I did put those on the coloring guide. I was like, did I remember those? Yep, I did. Those are going to be purple too. Basically oh, yeah. everything, everything um, that's left. We're going to add a little BG 11 to their flight goggles, which are literally the cutest things ever. <laughs> it's um, like my favorite part about the whole. Well, and we were all laughing at my in-person classes, Kelly. We love that they have the flight goggles, but yet they're not. They're not wearing them. They're not wearing them. So we, we were was... getting a kick out of that. Oh, we had so many thoughts about it because like, then originally the guy who was throwing the airplane had the flight goggles on. Yep. And we were like, but he's the one throwing the air. Like we, we, yeah, like he's like the last one that needs it, but he's going to, yeah, be yeah. We, we went to a whole deep dive of like, wait, which way should be? And then we're like, you know, it doesn't matter because it's adorable. Ooh. I got a Mr. Harley over here supervising. He just hopped up. Hi. Aw. We had um all three kitties went to the vets today just for their usual checkups. But oh my gosh. Oh, you did all three at once? All three at once. I'm like, just bring it on. Let's just get it done, you know? So Chris helped me wrangle them all into their carriers. And then I just went, which was fine. And then Harley went on a walk in his stroller today too. So they've had quite the eventful day. He must be exhausted. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I think Harley really is exhausted because he seems a little out of sorts. <laughs> He's like, today was too much. Yeah, today was a lot. And so now I'm just blending out with V12. The big thing that I just recommend is even though we shot, I shadowed everything at once, when I get into that blending mode, I'm going to work one image at a time because with alcohol-based markers, to get things to blend together, we are um, wetting the cardstock so that the things will blend. Um, and so you want to work in small areas you don't want to start blending one paper airplane and then blend another paper airplane. You want to work on one at a time so you're not having to make more work for yourself in saturating the cardstock because alcohol evaporates really quickly. Um, you know, you just want to stay in one small area. So that's just my tip. My tip for that part. I don't know if you guys can hear the where the sirens. Lawn Fawn is next to a uh, a fire station, so oh, I, I can't. Didn't. I never know if like if the you know if the microphone picks that up or not. I know. <laughs> I feel like my mic always picks up so much, but I didn't hear the fire trucks on your end. Sometimes people in like my online classes, they're like, "Oh, I can hear your birds," and I'm like, "You can? Like my birds outside?" I'm like, "Well, wow. I hear your birds sometimes. I really like it. It's like, yeah, I know. You guys always say that. You're like, I love it. I'm like, okay. And I'm trying to read back through some some comments. I got I got uh, into my uh, coloring. Coloring. Room. Oh, people were oh East Coast and and Libby says she loves boba. Yay! Oh, <laughs> hi Libby. 
<laughs> Let me look at all the purple I'm coloring. And you asked me what boba is. They're like little tapioca balls at the bottom of like either tea or slushies. And you have a big straw. And so when you drink the tea or the slushie, then the boba, like the little tapioca ball comes up. It, I, I think it's really fun. <laughs> I can oh, see something. it being a little bit of a weird texture thing. If, it is. You know, yeah, that's like, why. I think that's people... what you have to get used to. Yeah. Let's see. What is, uh, people are posting a bell, but I don't know if I. A bell? Yeah. Oh, which retired holiday set would you like to see return? Oh, I saw Harvest. I was like, oh, what? Like, I got <laughs> really nervous. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going to vote. I want. I bet Shari wants Critters in Costume. I remember you making really cute cards with that, Shari. I think she wants Parum pa pum pum Oh, maybe. That's what I just voted for. But I love crit. I forgot Critters in Costume is discon is retired. Someone says that they've been very good boys and girls, and they want hints. I should start giving hints. Yeah, well, I you did. That you I did give one. I did give one so far. I, I I am getting confused because we're almost done with fall winter. I know. <laughs> and Jen and I are working on fall winter for a virtual trade show. But yeah. then we have June coming up, and I keep forgetting that it is not Halloween. Uh, and um, but I am getting so excited for June. Um, and if anybody who knows me well knows, well, I'm an animal lover, but um, I love dogs so much. So if you love dogs, you might be happy. Come with June. the June release. Yes, I have to say it was a little confusing in may like because i had the june stuff i was like try like okay don't talk about like don't say you know when i was yeah because like, okay, yeah, yeah. it was like a little you know i was like okay that was the may release oh, wait was that the may release or is it the june release i know oh my god but goodness. it was fun i liked having a little mini may release i think that was super fun I i think it was fun you know it had we had done it during like 2020 and 2021 and and I had really liked it. And we kind of went back to how we had done it before for 2022. And then this year we thought, you know what, let's go back. We actually really liked having the, especially May is so crazy. There's graduations and school ending. It's so much yeah. fun. Um, that it was nice. It's nice to have like a little mini release. And then we were able to bring back all the high five stuff, which was really fun. Yes. And, um, and then uh, and then we're able to, you know. Yeah. I think it was fun. Our fun June release coming up, which is we're going to it's going to be a blast. And that will help tide us over in the summer months. What color scarf does the. Does the the guy who's in the, um, the yellow, yellow, he has a purple scarf. He has purple. OK. But Kelly, you could color it any color you want to color it. Oh, true. I could. <laughs> <laughs> we do we do it we all do it it's all good i know you know i you know just like you were talking about at the beginning i today i would love to just be told exactly what to craft you guys you guys yeah. have those days yeah i am i am tired i haven't been sleeping that well and i am just thrilled to have you tell me yay the color awesome because i feel like i'm being creative but i'm but my brain can also be tired at the same time you know so i am uh, Stacy, my friend Stacy just said corgis and not quite corgis. She, she, yeah, she they're not like corgi. A, not specific breeds. They're, yeah, they're not specific dogs. So you'll be able to make them whatever you want, which I love yeah. that about them. Um, real quick, I'm going to take BG11. And this is such a subtle little thing to do, but I really think it adds a lot. I'm just going to do a very thin line at the top of the flight goggles. So essentially your flight goggles are going to be half BG11 and half white, but it's just enough to add a little dim dimension to them. Again, it might not show up on camera as well, um, but you could use BG11 or BG10. Um, you guys knew I had to throw a BG in here for something. Like I couldn't do a whole class without any teal. And that's it. That's our coloring tonight. 
Oh, here's a good question. Someone's planning what to make for a September retreat and they want to do a fall card. Will the fall release be out in time? So our fall winter release will be August 24th. So it'll be out just in time for you. And there's some really, really cute stuff. If you're looking to make a fall card, you're going to love it. So I just sit here and smile. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want Lom Fon to fire me. <laughs> not um, possible <laughs> I know um Sheila just said I'm with you Kelly I'm tired and don't want to make decisions I need Jen's coloring guides yay that makes me so happy I love when you guys find the coloring guides and the handouts just helpful and you know you're you're liking them and they're useful for you that makes me so helpful uh, happy all right how are you doing Kelly over there your coloring I'm guides all Oh, I have all of my like stamped images colored now. Perfect. Yay. So I'm going to set this strip of images aside, which again, I also love that they're on the tape. So I know I'm not going to lose all my little pieces. Um, I'm just going to set these aside. And then we are going to do a little ink blending. Um, and the first thing that I'm going to ink blend is my Stitched Oliver's ABCs. Um, so I did mention on the handout to have it on a piece of tape because I just think it's a little bit easier um, because we're only going to ink blend um, dust the bottom of the letters with that butter, um, very light yellow Lawn Fawn ink. So I'm going to go ahead and just move a few things aside. And I'm going to grab that Lawn Fawn Butter ink. And I have a um, ink blending tool per color family. Um, and I never really ever clean my blending tools. Um, but what I do get in the habit of doing is I always have a flour sack cloth in my lap. Which, Kelly, do you have your flour sack cloth? I do. <laughs> You're like, oh, I have this. I have this. This yep. one, good. I don't good, know good. where my other one went. It's somewhere, but this is a uh, Rebecca get, uh, has some like old surgical cloths. So perfect, perfect. Um, and so all that I do, and this is just a cloth. I'm just very vigorously, like I'm not gently. I'm pretty forcefully just massaging my blending brush because I know probably the last color I used was the, was either Lawn Fawn Sunflower or. <laughs> mustard seed distressing. Both of those are much brighter than butter. So I want to make sure I'm going to have a true butter color. So I'm just massaging the blending tool into, you can even see the yellow, even on my dirty <laughs> flower sack cloth, but I'm just massaging it to get all that extra ink off and then it'll be good to go into the butter. So I just have one ink blending um, tool per color family. All right, so I'm going to just take my blending brush. I'm going to load it up with some ink. I'm working on my tabletop, which is made out of glass. Um, I highly recommend working on a um, non-porous surface when you're ink blending. If you're working on paper, a lot of that ink is going to absorb into the paper before you get to the actual paper that you want to ink blend on. So work on a non-porous surface. I do think glass is the best option, um, but a craft sheet. Um, honestly, if you have like plastic packaging from your stamps or whatever, you could do use that in a pinch. And I'm going to tap my blending brush on the non-porous surface. That's going to lay some of the ink down. And then this is where you want to start blending right on your non porous surface. So I'm pressing my brush down on my glass tabletop, and then I'm going to bring my brush into the Oliver's ABCs. And again, we're just dusting the bottoms of each of these letters, and we'll get into doing some more ink blending um, on our backgrounds in a minute. But that's kind of my steps that I always, always do. So they kind of half half yellow and half white. Yep, then. just kind of like a little uh, gradient um, up the letters. And again, if I was doing this on my own time, um, you know, when I designed this card, I probably ink blended the bottom of like a one inch strip of cardstock and then I die cut it. But for the sake of class, we're going to um, just dust the bottoms with butter ink. 
my letters don't want to stick to my tape. So I'm just going to go to town. Um, and then Marcy's asking, what color is the big belly? I wonder if she means the belly on one of the mice. Yeah, the belly on the mice, I used E00, a really, really light brown. And I traced the left side of the belly. And then I went over it in R20. So it has a little bit of a pink hue to it, but we toned it down with that E00. I have one of the, the heart trail die cut because Miles insisted that the card needed it. So <laughs> Oh, cute. I can't wait to see where you end up putting that. <laughs> I'm not sure where it's going to go. Or maybe I'll let him decide to add one somewhere. <laughs> so you can just see, I just did a light dusting. Again, nothing fancy, but it, it just kind of will add a little something when we add it to our card. And I'm going to set these letters aside. Um, and then I just have a small Mr. Bottle with isopropyl alcohol. I just missed it on my table and then I wipe it with the flour sack cloth that cleans up all that extra ink. It's alcohol, so it evaporates quickly. So there's really no leftover like dampness from water. All right. So let's go ahead and we are going to do our little background for card two first, since we kind of have the butter ink out, I think. Um, that will work out nicely. So I'm taking out my white cardstock from card two. Um, I told you just to have a four and a quarter by five and a half piece of cardstock, whatever cardstock you like to use for ink blending. So Kelly's going to be like, we've talked a lot about cardstock tonight. Kelly's going to be using that 80 pound Nina, and I'm going to be using the distress white heavy stock. Um, but whatever cardstock you find works well. Um, for ink blending. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm still going to be using that butter ink and I am going to ink blend the whole background um, of this four and a quarter by five and a half. Now when I do this, I like to use something to hold my background down like a piece of paper or a piece of plastic so I don't leave any fingerprints um, we all have oils on our hands and if you use hand lotions and whatever, um, you just will leave any fingerprints behind. So I just kind of am using a little piece of white cardstock. And the thing about ink blending is pressing harder isn't going to get you results faster. It's just going to, um, kind of rush the process so it's not going to be as smooth of a blend as it could be. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm very heavy handed. I talk about this a lot with you guys in all of my classes. So it's a reminder that I have to tell myself, like, have a gentle hand. Don't go super hard. Um, and that's going to give you a nice soft blend. And the more you build up your layers of color, that's when you're going to get like a more vibrant color. Now, with that being said, this is butter. It's a very, very light yellow, it's not meant to look like sunflower or mustard seed distressing, right? I chose a soft color for a reason. So, and don't hesitate to move your paper around, turn it, spin it so that it's easier for you to do a blend. Um, don't feel like you have to fight with your paper and keep it one certain way um, when you're blending. But the big thing is to start blending on your non-porous surface first and bring that brush into your background. The other thing I will just mention, um, sorry, I know this is a long drawn out explanation, but teaching in person again was really fun in May. And one of the benefits of teaching in person is I have a better idea of maybe where people are struggling or they might have a question. Um, and I was seeing um, some people in my in-person classes were using smaller blender brushes to do big backgrounds like this. And that makes it really tricky to get a nice, smooth blend. So um, these smaller brushes are great when you're using stencils and you want to direct your color in a smaller area. But when you're doing a whole background like this, having a larger um, head on your blending brush really does help you get a smoother blend, just as a little tip if you find that you're struggling. Now, if you have smaller blender brushes and you do amazing backgrounds, um, that's fine. Great. Awesome. You know, but if you're struggling, that might be one thing you might want to look at. 
Yeah, I have. I don't. I only have a couple big ones, and there. I my big one is blue because I have a tendency to do blue as my like biggest yeah. area, a blue and a green. Yep. So, so I only had this one, but the, it, but it worked. It ended up working out fine. You yeah. know, like it's yeah, yeah, we're gonna do clouds That's over right. it too. It's, it's all fine. good. Yeah, it's all yeah. good. But I just know sometimes people will just ask questions like, "Oh, well, how do you get the soft blend?" And again. Paper matters, inks matter, tools matter. Everything kind of all amounts to, you know, a successful technique. Yes. And then someone was um, mentioning, Tracy was mentioning that she had a cake and crafts birthday party and she made 18 platform pop-ups and not a creature was stirring stamps and they colored them and glued them. And that sounds like the oh most God. birthday party. You are an awesome grandma. I love that. That is so fun. I love that. I want that for my birthday. <laughs> yeah, right? I want that for my birthday. So I know Miles just had a birthday. Shari yes. just had a birthday. I just had a birthday. All <laughs> May birthdays. Um, tomorrow, Chris and I are doing seashell resin art. He purchased yes. like this art class for us to go to tomorrow for my birthday. So I'm so How excited. How is that? Yeah. yeah. I know. It's all my favorite people have May birthdays. <laughs> Yay. I know your brother, right? And your dad? Yeah. And my dad, because my yeah. dad and Miles have the same exact birthday. Um, and my brother's in May as well. So, um, so yeah, I know Miles turned three, which I can't even believe it. And he had the best time. I mean, he just was like over the moon excited for everybody to sing happy birthday to him. It was so cute. <laughs> Yay. All right, so now we are going to do some stenciling. I am going to use the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil, which I love this stencil. It has like different poofs on each side, um, little poofs and big poofs and stretched out poofs, and it's the best poofs ever. Um, and <laughs> so when I'm doing bl um, ink blending with a stencil, I like to use the Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station. And I know Lan Fong carries it in their online store. And um, it's, mag it's a magnetic platform. So I am going to use the magnets to hold my stencil in place. But I like to just use a little bit of removable adhesive to hold my background in place. Kind of just a little habit I've gotten into when I'm kind of blending a whole background with a stencil. So I just use a little bit of removable adhesive and then I take my cloudy stencil and I just place it down. And then the really nice strong magnets will hold it in place. Now when I am blending the clouds, I actually like to hold it horizontally, like to make it easier for me to blend upward. Um, and we're going to be using, or I'm going to be using Lawn Fawn Fresh Lavender, which is a really nice, um, soft, light, um, purpley color. And then, uh, Shari was saying she was so sad she missed on Miles' birthday this year. And I was too. We missed you so much. Miles had so much fun with, uh, Uncle Shari and Uncle Matt. And he gets to meet Auntie Jenny in September. So, you know, I can't wait. The That's only, all we ever do is make cards for Auntie Jenny that he, we, we are not allowed to send her. <laughs> I love this. By the way, Kelly was telling me this, like every time Miles is making cards, like Kelly will be like, who's this for? And he's like, Auntie Jenny. And she's like, okay, well, let's send it to her. And he's like, no, <laughs> you can't send it, which I absolutely love, by the way, because Auntie Jenny is really bad at sending cards too. <laughs> so it's totally okay. Yeah. The, it's the, the thought that's there, yeah, right? It's uh, the thought. Yeah. Yeah. And then someone's asking if the wild for you lion dye fits the great freebie. And I am like 95% sure it does. Now I'm questioning myself because it's been a little while, but I'm pretty sure that it does. Um, and someone's asking if there'll be dyes for the year keeper stamp set. Yes. Once we re-release that stamp set, um, then we'll come out with the, the dyes for it. Um, and, um, oh my gosh. That's such a cool story. Someone's saying they were due on May 24th. She came June 2nd. And then her daughter had her daughter on May 24th. I love that. I know oh my, my God, that's fun. My son was two weeks late. And I texted my dad that morning. And I, as a joke, I was like, hey, because I had been, I was so overly pregnant at this point. I didn't even get him a birthday and present <laughs> or anything. It was like the height of COVID. You know, it was everything, yeah. right? And uh, and so I said, hey, I think I'm getting, I might, you might be getting a grandson as your birthday present. 
and then I didn't realize I wasn't sure I was just going in for a doctor, but I didn't realize I was in full blown labor. Oh, and when you uh, said that. yeah. And so then I never wrote him back again. And he like wrote my, my husband, Mike, and he's, you know, writing us and couldn't reach us. And finally, I guess they called the hospital. And so then a nurse came in and was like, your parents keep calling. Can we just tell them you're okay? <laughs> Because That's so like funny. Hours because he came, he came. So it was in six hours and he was here and it was just wild labor. And, oh and um, I had contractions that never stopped. So like, I, I, there was never any time to like, even think about a phone or anything, you know? So it was so funny. So then he got so worried because I texted him that and then just ghosted him after that. So. <laughs> uh, two things I just wanted to say really quick. Shari has a request that Miles starts to make cards for Auntie Shari too. <laughs> um <laughs> And then somebody just, um, Nadine mentioned, why is it that when I add the rosy R20 to the cheeks, it tends to lift my darker color? Um, I think what you're seeing happening is with alcohol-based markers, if you use a lighter color on a darker area, it the lighter color overpowers the darker color. So that's exactly what we want it to do because the markers are a translucent color, but dabbing it with the R20, we're overpowering those browns so that those rosy cheeks will show up. And that way you don't need to do the rosy cheeks first and then color around them. This will make it look a bit more natural. So hopefully I answered your question um, okay there. So real quick, I just ink blended one of the poofs and I kind of do the same type of motion. I tap a little ink off on my stencil and then I bring the ink up into my paper. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate my stencil and go down a bit on my background. And I personally just don't want my clouds to overlap. You can have your clouds overlap if you want. It all depends the look that you're going for. We're going to do this um, four times, essentially. You're going to do each, I'm going to do each side of the stencil. Um, and I'm going to put them fairly close together, but not overlapping because you are going to want, and I'm just going to bring the sample in, you are going to want kind of a good chunk towards the bottom that's going to be all the yellow, not any clouds. So just keep that in mind as you're, as you're making all your clouds. Oh, someone wants the great line to come back. I want it to come back too. We, we will bring it back. I promise eventually. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, Jen, I love how you did this because I think in my head, I would have tried to somehow do the purple and the yellow at the same time. And I love how you put the yellow down first and then the, the purple over top. Thank you. I was kind of thinking, I mean, it's still, look, I mean, it's kind of very non-traditional, right? It's not blue sky with white clouds or whatever. But again, I was kind of on this kick of like trying to not use teal for everything in my life. Every once in a while I get on those kicks and then I go back to using teal for everything. So <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to challenge yourself though, um, to use different colors. And like I, I mentioned a lot, uh, Shari and I sometimes teach online classes together and I love when she teaches them with me because I actually let her kind of make her cards first and then I use the supplies that she used. So the marker combos and the ink pad combos that she used to create my cards for the class. And I always love that because her influence and her different color schemes and things that she likes really influences those classes. And it's really fun. Yeah. That's why I like, um, I like remaking people's cards, like design team member cards um, and my friends, like, because it's stuff I would have never thought of doing. So yeah. Yeah, it just makes it, um, you know, makes you try something new. Yeah. And I just want to mention, so my fourth poof is this one, but it really irritates me that these two poofs line up so close. It just bothers me. So I'm actually going to shift my stencil pretty far down um, towards me, but there is a little gap. I'm off camera. There is a little gap here. So I'm just going to put um, a little piece of paper there so I don't accidentally ink blend that gap. Um, but then that way I was able to just shift the stencil so you get a whole nother look from it as well. So just yeah, another idea. 
Yeah, I like to shift them. I also will tilt them too. Oh, yeah. A little bit. And you could obviously you would want to clean it off so you didn't get ink every all over your card, but you can also flip them over. And then, oh, yes. Yeah. Going so it's kind of like you have eight different uh, looks for Options. clouds. So if you didn't like it, yes, yeah, so you could tilt it, shift it like Jen did, tilt in different directions, or flip it over and have the clouds go different. That way, you don't end up with that, like, because I don't like that stack thing either, Jen. So I always yeah. have to like go around with how, how it's going to be. I feel like that's like a song, like tilt it, flip it, shift it. Yeah. <laughs> that bop I, feel, it. I feel a song coming on, but I'm not musically inclined. So that's where I'm going to stop. <laughs> um, so my stencil is all fresh lavender ink and my make art station is, but let's, um, so how cute is that? I love it. It makes me, it reminds me of this sort of like, um, I don't know, like sunrisey golden. Do you know what this honestly reminds me of is the hazy skies that we just had on the East Coast oh. because of the Canadian fires. Yeah. Oh, honestly, goodness. I, was, I, I had a premonition. I must have known that that was happening. Um, but what I wanted to mention is I'm going to clean my make art station and my stencil. I'm going to still use that um, mini mister bottle of isopropyl alcohol. And I just missed it and then wipe with my flower sack cloth. So this is a nice and quick, easy way of cleaning your stencils when you're just using inks. This won't work if you're using pastes, but when you're using inks, it's a nice, quick, easy way. So it's going to be dry right away and we can go ahead and work on our next background. I never had known about this till you taught me this, Jen, and it's like life changing for stencils. Yay. Because you can kind of move on, you know, you can really just move on nice. so quickly. It makes me use my stencils more because of that, yeah. you know, honestly, the make art station, that magnetic board and the mister of alcohol, it, I literally want to stencil everything. I mean, I posted three cards today. It was all stenciling. Like I just <laughs> like stencil, 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 stencil. Oh, I'm glad to hear that someone says the haze has been lifting. I'm glad to hear yes. that. Yeah, we had blue skies here on Cape Cod today, and it was the first day we've had blue skies in a long time. So, but yeah, hello, Laura. That's Laura. She's in Connecticut who said that the haze is lifting. Oh, I'm um, so, so I'm going to take out my card kit one, and there's another four and a quarter by five and a half piece of white cardstock, whatever you like to um, ink blend on. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to add a little bit of removable adhesive just to kind of get it onto the board. And we're going to use our cloud stencil. But this time we are going to do a few different ink colors. So we're going to start with butter. Oh, someone's asking what kind of alcohol, either uh, disopropyl alcohol. Yes, 91%. Or rubbing alcohol. Yeah, rub, or rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol, yep. Um, and then uh, they're asking to use the chamois to wipe up the water, the rubbing alcohol. Um, we just use water on the chamois. Yeah. Um, with kind of rubbing alcohol, I'll use my like kind of rag cloth. Um, but for the I chamois, think the rubbing alcohol might kind of break down the lawn fawn chamois. Yeah, I try to just stick to water on the chamois. Um, so I just have a cloth. It's like an inky cloth. I keep it in my lap. I love it because anytime I get glue or ink on my hands, I always have this in my lap. So I just quick, do a quick wipe and it's just so convenient. Um, and then somebody asked if there's new hot foil plates in June. There is. Uh, there's not an interactive in June, but there's some stuff that works with previous interactive. So I think you guys are going to like that. Um, and it looks like Rebecca said there was blue skies here in New York City as well. So that's really oh, great. Oh, good. Good, 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 good. Yeah, I know. It's it was weird to see those pictures. What 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 often what California looks like, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't usually get that. But yeah. I guess they're saying because there were so many wildfires in Canada, which is partially because we haven't had enough rain, that's what was making the the smoke travel so far. I believe that's what I heard. Don't like quote me, but is could could I ask Jen before I start? Yeah. I feel like Am I going to do like two yellows, two blues, or two greens, two purples of the clouds? Yes, how that's what I was go? just going to say. Um, so we are. We're going to do two butters, two minty freshes, 
And then we're going to dust the bottom with purple. We're not going to do any clouds with purple. Okay. Yeah. I kind of have to look at it and I get confused. But Me this too. Is, That's why I, I had know. to ask. Yeah. This is, this is minty fresh right here. And then we're going to dust from the bottom with fresh lavender. So, okay. yeah. And I'm uh, spinning, spinning my stencil, shifting and spinning, shifting and spinning. Kind of decide. I know I'm doing the same thing too. It's like, oh, mm, uh, mm, it's mm. fun. It's like one of those things that like you spend so much time deciding, but it really doesn't. It doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> yeah. It's going to look so cute no matter what. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. Yep. I've never made a cloud background that I didn't like. Because I know. That's why. It's like, why are you even thinking about why it? Why am I so much? worried about this? Yeah. Yep. And it happens pretty quickly. Like, and so before you switch your ink color, you definitely want to um, clean off your stencil, you know, wipe it with something. If you don't, if you didn't know about the isopropyl alcohol trick, um, a baby wipe or something, just make sure it's dry before you go to do your and second you can't color. wipe it with your wet, um, with a wet. Yeah, you can wet it. Yeah, you can wipe it with your watered chamois, blonde fawn chamois. But again, just make sure it's dry before you go on to um, your next blending. Yes, and then someone's asking, um, just plain, yeah, it's plain rubbing. Like I just use the rubbing alcohol that's like $1 at CVS, you know. Yeah, same. <laughs> that's fancy. Yeah. Like I, everybody always asks me what the percentage is. Mine is 91%, but I don't know that 70% wouldn't work. I don't know. It's just the big bottle that I've had in my house. Um, yeah. That just lasts forever. Whatever was cheapest at the store that day, yeah. I think probably work. Yeah. And then um, let's see. Uh, there was another question here. Someone's asking when retired sets might come back. So I'm not really sure. We never quite know here. In California here, um, I love living here. It's awesome. But we are limited on space <laughs> in California. So um, so right now, I don't think that my warehouse manager would be happy if I started bringing back retired items. But as soon as we can reorganize, then we can bring back <laughs> some things. We're always looking for room here to store all of these awesome goodies. Ah, uh, yay. Margo says, my first card we stenciled looks amazing. I can't wait to try this all the time. Thanks, Jen and Kelly. You're welcome. Oh, yay. Oh, I love that. Now, Jen, as you go into your green, can you give yes. us some tips going up to so, the yellow? Um, so you are... N n I didn't overlap. No. Okay. I know. I'm trying to remember, but... I didn't overlap the colors. So they are pretty, you know, yellow, minty, fresh, fresh lavender. Like I didn't um, mix yeah. the colors at all. So you can see the tips of the clouds here are, are pretty white. White. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, good question. That's nice thought, but it's always, uh, I like I that. know, yeah. Sometimes I overlap because we are using water-based dye ink pads, which are what lawn fawn ink pads are. It's fun to overlap sometimes because you get a whole new color. Um, but just on this card design, I decided not to. I'm trying to pick my next cloud again. I'm like, I know I just did the same thing. I did yeah. a little shifting again, a little shifting. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, cause I have my rubbing alcohol. I can quickly clean this. I'm going to do this and do a little flipperoo and try that. Oh, that's a good I, idea. I, I'm talking like I talk to my son, everything. I call everything yeah. a flipperoo or a. Oh yeah. Flipperoo. Everything's exciting. Yes. <laughs> Aha. That's oh, a whole new world now. I know. I actually never flip mine, and I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you've given me permission, Kelly. Permission to flip. Permission to flip. All right. We'll see how it turns out. So cute. I, I just like love, I just love really this stencil because there's just so much you can do. I clearly recently ranked my minty fresh. My cod's got a little dark, but it's going to be okay. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had to re-ink any of my Lawn Fawn inks except for Jet Black yet. Oh, really? Yeah, I yeah. re-inked 
uh, minty fresh kitty pool merman and mermaid all the time because we use them so much here. well you i use mine a lot but i do also mix in my distress inks in there yeah. so but you you use them so we much. also are very dry here so i think that's a well that too yeah yeah everything dries out here um really true quickly. true 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 Someone's saying that people, the critters do need a merry-go-round. I know we need a merry-go-round now to go with that Ferris wheel. We'll end up with the whole amusement park by the end of it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that'd be so fun. So I have, like I said, I did two rows of butter and two rows of minty fresh. I'm just going to leave this on the board, but I could do this on my tabletop if I want. But what I'm going to do is I am just going to dust the bottom um, with some fresh lavender. And you can bring it up as close to the minty fresh as you want. I wouldn't mix purple and green because I just think it could be questionable. But again, you can prove me wrong. You can do whatever you'd like, but I do leave it a little white. So cute. All right, I just remembered we're die cutting during this because, so I'm gonna grab my um, die cut machine, but I like to ink blend my backgrounds first before I die cut them. I don't know, Kelly, what do you like to do? I, well, I like to die cut them usually first, um, but that's only because I worry that like our die cut machines, especially here at Lawn Fund, are very well loved um, because we're die cutting so much because we make we do a lot of um, classes for our store owners. We yeah. do a lot of, uh, uh, car making. So I always worry that when I die cut it, that something's going to ruin it. Although I guess I could just put like a piece of typing paper over top. Uh, but then I also did it, too, just because um, I pre cut it here because I wanted to yeah. be able to answer questions and stuff too so that was part of it why part of the reason why but i know that you like to then trim down or cut down yeah i like to trim after. down after or die cut after most of the time because i think um for me personally it sometimes cleans up the edges for me if i mm -hmm. like accidentally got a little heavy with ink on my edge and then i also like sometimes i like the ink into the stitching groove but sometimes I don't. So it does look different yeah. if you have it pre-done. Yeah. So you can see mine, it kind of made the stitching sort of stand out. I still think it's really pretty. I you think it's pretty. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. I think mm -hmm. it's pretty for sure. Yeah. Again, there's just so many options. Nothing's right. Nothing's wrong. It's you can whatever. see how my, my minty fresh, like I just re-inked it. So it was a bit dark there, yeah. but it still looks nice. It's still cute. We're going to be sticking all kinds of stuff on there. Um, yeah. And so we had talked about this. Um, somebody had asked about stitched rectangles. So what I die cut mine out with is the largest stitched rectangle from the outside in stitch rectangle set, which is going to cut this to be four by five and a quarter. So it's just going to have a nice little bit of a border. And I wanted to show you guys, because I know someone had asked earlier, let me grab... Um, So this is how they, how our rectangles, the three rectangle sets work. So this one's the large dish rectangles. And this one has the five and a half by four and a quarter of that like standard size card. And then it goes down by a half an inch border down here. And so your small stitch rectangle is going to fill that in. So it's going to fill in that middle size there. And you can see all the actual dimensions on the site too, if you wanted the actual ones. And then what the outside in does is it then fills in the rest of the little eighth inch border. So that's what you're gonna see now. The other thing that's fun about these guys is it also cuts the stitched window. So if you ever wanted a stitched kind of opening in your card, that's what you can use the outside in for. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. I'm like so not used to die cutting over here on my desk. I have it on a bookcase behind me usually, my big die cut machine. And I think it's almost time that I can treat myself to a new cutting plate. What do you guys think? Do you also do this where you yeah. just like, oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Mine you just keep like, using it over yeah. and over. Just, yeah. <laughs> and every and every time I'm like, I really should just treat myself. Yeah, I, like, oh, I have I them. Like get one more cut out of this guy. <laughs> yeah, I have them, but I know. And then once you change it, you realize like how much better. Yeah. Yep. And you're like, why did it? You're like, why did it take me so long? And I have a feeling I have to replace my die cut machine soon because it's I've you know, like I said, we we use them here way more than like a, a standard anybody would would use it because we we make so many um cards for our store owners yeah and so i'm starting to get to the point where i might need to replace it um i know somebody was asking if there are mice in the june release um i don't think there are any mice I actually had to question that but there are definitely mice in fall winter so we had mice in may and um there are definitely mice being very cute and for both fall and for winter so you guys are gonna love that um, and there's a lot of cute, uh, cute critter and fun things in this actually stuff that works with previous releases, which I always love previous items um, and lots of summary feeling things too. So here's another trick for you, Kelly, that you might not know yet, but Brianne, uh, my friend Brianne, who owns the ink stand, which holds my ink pads, she has like these little rubber feet on the bottom of the ink stand. And that's what keeps this from moving around. Mm -hmm. She recommended that I put them on the bottom of my make art station. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. So it is up a bit higher. So there's a little bit of give, but it doesn't matter. But now like mine's dirty right now. And if your feet ever get dirty, just clean it off with the isopropyl alcohol just to get mine is glitter dust is really what happens. Um, and then it won't move on your table. It like stays better. So just a little. I like that. Another little tip for you. That's a really good tip. Yeah. And then someone just asked it if there's a tiny gift box add on in June. There is. And it's my favorite one. of all I time. love it. I love it. <laughs> I like I so don't good. always get to making the tiny boxes, but I'm definitely making one of these. Oh, it's the cutest thing ever. You guys are going to love it. It's really fun. And there is another tiny gift box for a fall winter too. So that's really exciting. And in true fashion, Lawn Fawn makes everything cute. <laughs> and then uh, somebody said that their cutting plate warps so much that it forms a hill. That's what mine does. And then I flip it over and I try to smoosh it back the other way and I cut the other direction. I got to gonna make those plates last as long as I can. So I am using the grid on my make art station to line my letters up. So that they're kind of nice and straight and somewhat evenly spaced out. Obviously, we don't have to worry about how spread out they are because we have a lot of room um, to work with. And then I'm going to use a piece of Best Ever Craft Tape. It's a piece I've used many times. I actually stick it right on the Raskog cart that is next to me. And I'm going to just kind of lay the tape down. And this is going to pick the letters up in all one swoop where they're nice and evenly spaced. And then the Oliver's ABCs, the stitched Oliver's ABCs are the perfect width to use the uh, 3L scrapbook adhesives foam strips. These things are amazing, you guys. So I just took a whole foam strip off. And I'm going to be able to quickly put some foam dimension behind each of my letters. So I just kind of lay the strip down and then I use my scissors and trim off wherever, you know, I don't want it. And I'm looking for more foam strips. I was like, where did all my foam strips go? And then I realized when I was traveling to teach in person, I made like I put a bunch of different kinds in one of the bags and I was like, oh, here they all are. I was like, there's no way I went through these that quickly. Well, my son steals them and then yeah. I go to Rebecca's side and get them because Rebecca sits right on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks foam squares are stickers. So he'll like cover, one time he covered his entire pants in. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> and and it just looked bizarre because he had like literally like carefully been placing them so it was covering all the fronts of his legs <laughs> that's so funny uh oh vivian says that her hill doesn't even go away even when she flips it it might be time for a new plate yep. <laughs> vivian we give you permission treat yourself to a new plate <laughs> all right and then if i have any extra of that foam strip left i just stick it right back 
on the backing. But now I have foam behind all my letters. And um, we are going to end up tucking this in the corner. But before we do that, I do want to stamp thanks for helping me. Um, because I find sometimes when you have stuff popped up, it's a little tricky to get your stamping to go all the way down nicely. So I'm going to put my background into my Misty. And I'm going to get out that sentiment. So on the stamp here, it's thanks for helping me fly. Um, so you could either cut your stamp apart. But what I did for something really small like this is I'm just going to concentrate on where I want um, thanks for helping me. I'm going to actually grab one of my dies and just place that down for spacing, for height. And we'll position, thanks for helping me, right above that. Okay. And I'll close right. this down. And then real quick, I just want to mention what I'm going to do when I go to ink this you could do selective inking. You probably could just take your ink pad and just ink the words that you want. But I have all my pieces of best ever craft tape that I reuse to hold my dies in place. I'm just going to put a piece over the word fly because you know what? It's been a long week. I'm tired and I don't want to accidentally ink it and mess up my card. So now I can just go to town with my inking. And then I'll peel this tape away and throw it away because it's inky and messy. And then I'll go ahead and stamp, thanks for helping me. Right. Perfect. Right, and thanks to Chris, I have a stamp chamois that I can clean my stamps. I always forget to wet it before we get, I go live. And I have one, I have it and had it in the case so that it would stay, yep, it's still good. Yay. Here in California, everything dries out, um, but the my case helped. And then here, um, oh, someone's asked about the foam strips, and we do sell them, and Shari linked them. And then somebody had just said Jennifer McGuire has a video on how to straighten out plates, and I clearly need to watch that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've seen rumbles of that video. It's something about, like, putting it in the oven or something. Oh. Oof. In, like, a baking sheet, maybe, with water? I don't oh. know. Don't quote oh. me. Don't quote me. Don't yeah. quote me. Well, I'm just laughing because I'm just a you know, terrible cook and I have I have started multiple oven fires, including two toaster oven fires just at Lawn Fawn. So I probably should not be putting Yeah, don't in. watch the video. You're not allowed to do that. Trick. Yeah, I'm not allowed to do it. Oh, in my yeah. defense, my pot part spontaneously <laughs> combusted. Yeah, don't listen to me. Shari's correcting me. Boiling water and pressure, not the oven. See, don't oh. listen to me. <laughs> See, this is me. why I start fires. It's it's uh yeah. it's, I'm gonna blame you now, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> I should have I should have known better than to pretend I knew. Not the oven. Yeah, I well, I did something. I don't even know what I was thinking. I wanted to keep pizza warm. So I, I put the whole box. I put the oven at 200. I put the whole box in there. But it had those like an ad on the top. They had like um, adhesive on it. You know, when they do that with the coupons on the top. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do not. It, was, it started up. <gasps> Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that'll easily catch. Yeah, I that was. I wouldn't have thought of that either, Kelly. So, um, okay. So we had our sentiment stamped. I have my word "fly" as all one word. I just peeled the liner off of my uh, foam, and what I'm gonna do is I want to center, um, the word "fly." amongst the sentiment that says thanks for helping me so i'm not centering it on the card i'm just centering it amongst the black sentiment that we just did and it's easy to kind of keep it straight because of that stitching on our rectangle then i get it placed and then i'll just gently peel my best ever craft tape back 
and it's all nice and straight and positioned. And I save that best ever craft tape. I just stick it on my rolling cart right next to me and I will use it again. All right. And then before we get any farther, we need to glitter all of the things. Because, you know, <laughs> I don't feel like, did we glitter in the last one? I don't remember. Sometimes I haven't been glittering as much. So we're going to glitter like all of the things. I can't remember. Um, I am going to be using Lawn Fawn Prisma Glitter. I have two-ish containers of, of the Lawn Fawn Glitter in here. Um, I do recommend, um, I have lots of tips and tricks to share with you so that you don't feel like you are messy with ultra fine glitter. I know a lot of times um, ultra fine glitter gets like a bad rap in the crafting community because it can get <laughs> messy. But um, I glitter all of the things and I don't have glitter everywhere. So um, tip number one is to contain your glitter. Have it in a container that is at least this size. This is just a sandwich food container. Um, anything smaller than this, I just find you have more chance of spilling out. Um, so this is like, I think it's like a five by five ish. Yeah, five by five. It's it's a slice of bread, you know, a sandwich food container. Um, and then my other trick is um, I love, love, love my Sakura Quickie Glue Pen. Um, what's nice about this is it's a nice detailed glue pen, but pretty much once you put the glitter on it, it's dry. So there's not like a long dry time, but because it is a nice fine detail, you can do some really fun detail work with it. Um, most of the time I dip my image into the glitter, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. But in this case, our letters are already on our card and I do want to add a little bit of sparkle to them. So I have a trick for you on how to do that in a neat manner. Um, it is not going to be to dip this whole thing in here because I think that could get messy really fast. So what I'm doing is I'm using my quickie glue pen. And I'm just drawing um, lines of glue, like on the right side of the letters. And you can do one letter at a time if, if you um, want, because it does dry really quick. Um, I'm, I'm a professional glitterer, so I'm going to do all three letters at once. But <laughs> it's okay to just do one. And then I have the cap of my Quickie Glue Pen on the back of my pen. Um, and I'm going to use the cap of it like a scoop. And I'm going to pick up just a little bit of glitter and dump it where I just put my quickie uh, glue pen. So I'm not putting it everywhere, but just a little bit where I just added that glitter. So you can see my little piles of glitter, which I know can be scary. Um, and then I'm just going to take that now and dump it into my bucket. Now, there's a lot of static cling, which again, people are like, yuck. But I just take my quickie glue pen and I tap it on the edge of my cardstock. And that's going to pretty much dump all of that static cling off. Now, we did just ink blend the bottom of this background. So if your ink was a little bit darker or you use like Distress Oxide, it's not dry yet. So that's gonna hold on to glitter as well. So what I also have is just a dry paintbrush. And if any um, static cling is kind of hanging out on my inked background, I just dust it with my dry paintbrush right over my bucket of glitter and that'll get any of that extra glitter off as well. So those are some different tips for you. So cute. And now we're going to glitter all of the things on our mice. So I'm going to gently uh, peel my images off of the tape. Mine have been sitting on here a long time. So and this long piece of Best Ever Craft Tape, I'm gonna use, again, I'm gonna use it in little pieces to hold my dies in place when I do my die cutting. So it's not wasteful 
um, to use this tape. And that's why I do like to use Best Ever Craft Tape versus washi tape because I just get more uses out of it. I find with washi tape, I might, I maybe get like one use out of it and then I have to toss it. And I'm like adding more, more glitter, glitter. And then using my, took me a second to find a paintbrush. My son keeps taking all my supplies. All He's your supplies all. are like MIA. Yeah. Oh, and then someone was saying they want a school band theme for the release. And we actually do have Critter Concert. Maybe Shari can link it. Um, and um, and that has a few instruments in there. Not all of them. I feel like we need more. But if you know uh, some of Lon Fon's story, Mike, Erica, and I are, uh, we actually all met playing instruments together. And we're all, uh, all, all band nerds here. Oh, that's so funny. Vivian said, for the longest time, I thought the cap was an actual spoon until I saw it in person. No, I don't I don't know why the cap is designed like this, if it is meant to be a scoop, but it's more just like a little fanned out piece of plastic that I have made it into a scoop. <laughs> um, so I am now going to glitter um, little bits on each of these um, images. I do list on your handout what I glittered um, just so that it's helpful for you um, to be able to refer to. Um, and so I'm gonna start by doing the shadow of the green scarf. Uh, bye Stacy and Drew. Thanks so much for joining me a little bit tonight. Love you girls. Someone was asking what paintbrush I use for splatters and now I cannot find that paintbrush. Um, but it's just a cheap, tiny paintbrush is the best thing to do when you want to do splatters. You'll get like more control splatters. When you try using something bigger is it's when there's like a kind of like this size. Yeah, like that. Like and it's like, I mean, not like not as cheap as the one that's like in the Crayola watercolor, but like a not expensive one. But just this is just like a that. number two round paintbrush. And yeah, there's very. Yeah, that's why I couldn't even one. find the number because I don't know where. Oh, that makes me worried because now I gotta find another one. I really like that one. <laughs> it's somewhere, I'm sure. Um, oh, I now there it is. So no, I just okay. added um, quickie glue pen to the shadow of the scarf. And the way that I add glitter to things before they're on the card is I just take the image. And if you like to use tweezers, go ahead and use tweezers. But I just dip straight in and straight out. Again, there's a lot of static cling. And I just take my quickie glue pen, tap the edge so that it only, all that static cling will drop off. And mine is a number two. I just found it. And it's okay. the Claudine Helmuth. It was like, I think Ranger yeah. renamed it, right? But yes. they're like, it's like the, there's a Ranger set that's um, fairly inexpensive and it has a bunch of different sizes in it. And that's what mine's from. And I've had it for gosh, like 12, 13 mine, years. Mine are the Claudine Helmuth ones as well. And I actually just was talking about this in my art retreat. Yeah. Ranger has a set. They're called artist brushes. Um, I actually have them in my online shop. I don't think you guys do right. Kelly. In the I don't online think so. shop. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah but it's you should like bring them in seven, though. Yeah, you should. It's like seven or eight brushes and it's less than $10 for the whole package. And what I like about them is they are inexpensive, but, um, you can really abuse these brushes and they last a long time. Like they don't yeah. shed, not I've you can leave them in paint years. water for days. And I know all of this because I've done all of that. <laughs> yeah. I bought these before I started Lawn Fawn. So <laughs> yeah. they've lasted forever. Yeah. Um, so I am just adding um, glitter to the shadows of things. So the shadows on the paper airplanes, the shadows on the scarves, um, pretty much wherever you put your darker marker is where I'm adding shadow. I'm, I'm sorry, glitter. <coughs> Excuse me. And if I glittered the scarves, I chose not to glitter the paper airplane on that one. But you guys, hey, I will never tell you not to glitter things. So glitter whatever you would like. Um, somebody was mentioning, um, uh, talking about splatters again, different tips for getting them. If your splatters are too big, that means you added too much water. And if they're too small, it's too little water. And one thing I would suggest is just take a piece of scrap paper mm -hmm. and just practice on that scrap paper. And you'll start to like, I've just gotten used to how much 
water now I need to add. Um, and even then I always tap a little bit off to the side on a scrap piece before I tap onto whatever my project is, because I want to make sure I didn't add too much water. Cause I don't like those really big like globs that come out. So I, even, even though now I'm kind of used to how much water, I even still check just to be safe. So hopefully that helps a little bit. And be kind to yourself. Uh, splatters are organic. They're never going to turn out exactly how you want them to. You know, you kind of have to go to go with the flow with them and just kind of be okay with it too. Sometimes yeah, it's like a zen, it's like a sort of Zen garden type. Uh, you know what I mean? Like you have yeah. to just be okay with the flow of the art. It's a, yes. Trust exactly. me, I'm the kind of person that needs to tell myself everything. It's okay. <laughs> and what's great is a lot of lawn fawn sets has, have all those really cute smaller images. So if you accidentally get a splatter that's like a little bit bigger than you wanted and it looks awkward to you and it's bothering you, then stick a little lawn fawn heart on it or a little lawn fawn star or something, you know, a little another paper airplane or whatever it is yeah, you're a doing. A music note or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's an opportunity for embellishment. <laughs> yep, exactly. So for some reason, I didn't glitter the little mouse's paper on the ground or the pieces of paper. I don't know why. But you can if you want to. But just <laughs> letting you know, I didn't forget to list that um, on the handout. I just didn't do it. And somebody's asking about this method versus stickles. Yeah. So I know I like stickles too. I like all glittering methods, but this is just the method that I do the most. The thing about stickles and the reason why I might not choose stickles is um, you can't get as fine detail um, and it takes longer to dry and I'm impatient. So, but if I want to just do a thicker glitter or I don't care about the dry time, stickles is great. But of course, use what you have, use what it's you're awesome. comfortable with. Yeah, and it's a different look too. Yeah, it is a different look. And Char uses stickles on everything, like literally, and I love it. I think it's so cute. Although I am secretly trying to make her a Prisma glitter lover. Like I've sent her one of my glitter containers and everything. Yeah, but she's, she's, she's a, she's a, I know, I know she through is. through. I still love her. <laughs> I can still try to convert her to my ways. You know, <laughs> we tease, <laughs> we tease. Cause when we teach our online classes together, she's like stickling and we did a lot of glittering in our frosty friends class and she was using Prisma glitter. She's like, this is a lot. But she, was using a, she had a little container and I'm like, well, that's going to become messy, Shari. And then you're not going to like it. So I sent her a glitter <laughs> container. Ooh. Yeah. Shari loves sticker stickles. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. She did use chunky glitter all on her own for our class. Like I didn't even tell her like, you have to use chunky glitter. She did it all on her own. I was hey, so proud. I was so proud. Yeah, I always kind of forget to add. I like adding glitter. I have a tendency to forget to add it. Yeah. Uh, so doing stuff like this it helps me remember, it's you know. It's such a habit for me now. Like a card is naked without it, honestly. And Liz just reminded me that I do have a good um, tip that um, the Sakura Quickie glue pen is literally just a ballpoint pen that has glue that flows out of it. I mean, there might be something to the mechanism, but it literally looks like a ballpoint pen. So if you open up a quickie glue pen tonight and you used it for the first time and you don't go to use it for months, it is going to dry. The tip is going to dry and the glue is not going to flow out. So my tip for everybody that does classes with me is use your quickie glue pen at least once a month to keep that glue flowing. Now you guys can see I am almost at the end of my glue. It's like there's only a little bit left. Like I literally use these pens down to the last drop. I've never had one dry on me. So use it at least once a month to keep that glue flowing out of the tip. And remember, this glue pen is really for doing stuff like adding glitter. It's not really for gluing. Yeah, some people part. will glue paper piecing with it, but it. To me, I don't think it's strong enough, and I think it just dries too quickly. So I literally only use it for ultra-fine glitter. That's it. All right. 
Yay. Everybody's talking about Shari's stickles obsession. <laughs> I love it. All right. So I'm just going to move these aside and I'm going to bring this card back in that we had done um, fly. And I'm going to get out my card base. Because, you know, the year of 2023 for Jen Cherkis is to get her cards on card bases. I'm trying, at least. Um, and what I did for my card base is I am going to just gently dust the edges with some fresh lavender. Ink. Ink blend the edges. I actually will just probably see what's left on my blending brush. I do that a lot, although this is a really light purple, so I need a little bit more ink. And this is directly onto the card base, right? Yep, I'm doing it directly onto the card base because we're going to be putting that outside in stitched rectangle, or if you didn't have that die, um, you could cut your background to be four by five and a quarter. And so I just, I don't know, with the purple dusting on it, I just felt like it needed a little color, but I bet it would look really cute on a white card base too. You don't have to do this step. I feel like I'm a slow glitterer. Getting no, there. I kind of, I'll pause a minute. I'm a fast glitterer because I literally do it all the time. You because you glitter all the things. Yeah, because I glitter all the things. So I will pause for a minute. Thank you for saying that, Kelly. I'm also, I'm awkward with the tweezers and with, you know. So I'm not good with tweezers. I've just gotten good with my fingers. I just have, feel like I have a little bit more control, but I know some people are amazing at using tweezers and actually accomplishing things. Yeah, I'm definitely not great at it, but I feel like if not, because here we have, we have a lot more static here, you know, so the glitter is getting everywhere. With my, um, with the oils of my fingers, you know, so the yeah. tweezers are not that. So while you're glittering, I'll read some comments. Look at this. This is fun. Oh, look at uh, this. Shannon said, if I'm not using any glitter when I craft, I might still pull out my Quickie glue pen and just draw a little line on a scrap so it doesn't dry. That's an awesome tip, Shannon. Because um, even if you are not um, glittering. Yep. Yeah, somebody was asking what phone mount I'm using um, to hold my phone and Shari did answer it correctly. It's the Archon mount. Um, yay. Lori likes the background. I love it. Thank you guys. Um, I'm just scrolling. Lots of, lots of stickles comments. Um, so Michelle said, are the bristles softer? I try tapping and I either get nothing or, oh yeah. So it's not that it's a soft brush. I mean, again, it's a cheap brush, um, but there it's not like the crispy, crunchy brushes that come in like a kid's cheap, you know, watercolor set. Yeah. Yeah. So they are a bit softer. Right. I think we're keeping up on comments really well. Shari's rocking it. Thank you, Shari. Thank you, Shari. I know. This Ooh, is... Jackie says, I'm about at the end of my first quickie glue pen. Thanks to Jen. You know what? I Ooh. am so proud. So proud, Jackie. Lori says, when I do a top fold card, they never stand up, even with 110 pounds. Um, I would, I, I crease my fold with the um, bone folder. This is that Lawn Fawn Teflon bone folder. I really press on that crease. And you could always turn it into a side fold too, if yep. you prefer. Yep. You don't have to do a top fold. Ooh, Vivian's using the Lawn Fawn Sparkle Glaze. I love it. Ooh, yeah. And remember, you guys, if you're making cards with us tonight, I hope that you will uh, post some pictures. Make sure you tag Lawn Fawn. You can tag me as well if you want. And then use that hashtag LFCreateWithUs, all one word, and that will help um, help us find your posts as well. Yes. All right, so I am adding my background onto my card base flat. Um, sometimes I pop it up. Sometimes I don't. 
what is that? Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes I feel like a nut. Sometimes I don't. Right? Almond joy. And Almond joys have nuts. You know, stone. So, what's funny is that like, I don't, I mean, they're just, I think they're like the worst of the Halloween candy multi-pack, but <gasps> they have kind of the best commercial. Like I like the jingle. I don't like Almond Joys, but Mounds Candy Bars is my, my, fa really? my favorite. Yeah. It's Co coconut have and have dark chocolate. I mean, uh, that's all you need to say to me. Yeah, no, I'm a Milky Way girl through and mm. through. Well, you can send me all your mounds well, when you're trick or treating with Miles. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no, he kept picking like things that I didn't like. And I was like, I haven't spent time training him to pick yeah. the Milky Ways. Because <laughs> he was picking things that were like red, like Kit Kats or, you know, because he I didn't know what it. they were. And it was so sweet because he we never have really given him candy. So he didn't really know. He just thought they were like fun things to like line up and play with. So oh, my gosh. Like, I love it. That's so sweet. Every day. <laughs> he didn't realize this year he'll know that they're candy. But yeah, that is so year, sweet. Though. It was really cute. They were little, little toys to line up. So we are going to start to add our little critter. So I'm popping up this little guy that's carrying the paper airplane, filling in that left side of um, the bottom of the card. And I'm going to kind of just work my way up the card for spacing wise. Um, so I'm going to add the little green paper airplane with a foam square. The the um the trails the air trails are all flat except the thank you which kelly noticed um when she was kidding this afternoon that i forgot to mention in the prep instructions to stamp and die cut this thank you and this is from oh, the just the plain it was you have the thank you just not the that paper airplane oh Whoops, we forgot to mention it. That's so you might have been short a paper airplane. Yeah, Thank but you. but it, yeah, and, or if not, they may have just stamped two from the other side. You know what I mean? Because you can, yeah. you had it in the pictures, just um, not written down. Not in my words. Yeah. Yes. See, yeah. I'm a visual teacher and learner, so sometimes the words are tricky. So, but again, if you're following the picture, you're probably fine. So I'm going to oh, add Milky Ways. I know I could go on a whole thing about Milky Ways because I like the mini size the best because the chocolate to like caramel nougat ratio is perfect. The fun size doesn't have quite enough chocolate. There, there's a difference. I've thought about this a lot. Now, Milky Way, they have a dark chocolate one too, right? Isn't it like midnight or something? Yeah. And those are really good too. See, yeah, I would be all about that. I love dark chocolate. And Me again, too. coconut, anything coconut and dark chocolate. We went to dinner last night because my friend Jen's birthday was yesterday and we actually all were able to get together. So we went to dinner, which was nice. We hadn't seen each other in a while, but um, literally the dessert that Chris and I picked, it was just vanilla ice cream with coconut toasted, uh, coconut tossed on it and hot fudge. Like it was the simplest dessert, but it was like so perfect. He and I were both like so happy. Delicious. <laughs> yeah. I know. I love how everyone's uh, everyone's talking about uh, candy. I was. I don't know if this is embarrassing, but I did find some Halloween candy in the pantry yesterday, and I was eating it. <laughs> it's not embarrassing. It's all good. That's all okay, right? <laughs> we, know, we know the shelf life. Yeah, I'm assuming they last just till the end of time. You know. So my dad puts things in the freezer. <laughs> And then things last a lot longer, like his bread, his cereal. I make him sugar cookies at Christmas. He'll put those in the freezer. You know, I put, because I, I, I have to eat gluten-free. So I put yeah. that in the freezer always because I'm the only one that eats it. And I feel like the gluten-free stuff goes bad so quick. So I always have it in the freezer too. And then I'm like, always have bread. I can actually eat through the whole the whole uh, loaf, you know? <laughs> well, we have high humidity here on the Cape, so putting the bread in the fridge helps it not oh, get moldy. Yeah. So we do that a lot. So the little thank you um, trail, I'm going to just put a little bit of the, those foam strips behind the chunky part of the thank you so I can pop up that trail. 
and the foam strips work perfectly for that. I'm telling you, these foam strips are amazing yeah, if you like to it, pop up all the things. It makes it easier, huh? Yeah. And you can kind of bend it to, to the curve. Mm -hmm. which is and I one everyone's I, favorite cookies. Yeah. <laughs> Once I get everything popped up, I'm going to go ahead and add those other trails um, with just a little few dots of Lawn Fun Glue Tube. You really don't need a lot. Um, you could use your dot runner too. I've just gotten really good with my glue tube. I just have it always ready. We're well, using the dot runner for something this weekend. Oh, we did a platform pop up. And, um, it was so funny. I was realizing how little I use my dot runner anymore because I'm just using my Lawn Fawn glue tube for everything. Yeah. That I'm not popping up, obviously. You know, we do a lot of dot runner here in the office because we're always changing the different things. We're yeah. working on things for um, videos or for cards for our store owners. Yeah. And, um, and so we have a tendency to do that. And then, of course, you know, later I'm like, I should really be putting drops of glue later to make sure they actually stay. Yeah. You know, I've learned that lesson the hard way a few times, like even just doing stuff for you guys for the re for the retail trade shows we do. I'm like, oh, why did I glue tube that? <laughs> yeah, because it's hard to. Yeah. But yeah, but that's not that's just that's you know, not the, the norm. norm. No, the norm. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. This is just so, so cute. cute. Thank you. Kind of forgot about these cards. I feel like I made them a long time ago. I, think I did make them a really long time ago, but mm. it's just they're just so fun. I would never have made these skies. And now it makes me want to try like different awesome. combos. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love a good rainbow cloud background, obviously teal cloud background, but I was trying to switch things up. I got to keep everybody on their toes. So they'll want to come back for more create with us is, you know, someone's asking if the dot runner holds well, even days later it does. So the dot runner does kind of cure over time, Yeah, but it's not as secure as liquid glue. Like liquid no. glue is going to be a much more secure fit. But for us, we're like always moving things around, like right at the time. Cause we're trying to figure, Oh, are we going to put this or this or, uh, cause we're, we'll make, we make, you know, 200 of these cards or more. And so they have to be reproducible and we're always trying to come up with different ideas. And so uh, that's why we're moving things around. But even then cards I've made with, with dot runner um, or like I always put dot runner on the backs is that when I attach things to cars, they always stay. It's like the little tiny pieces that you really yeah. want to glue. Yeah. Yeah. Like the trails. Yeah. Oh yeah. Peppermint York peppermint patties are so good too. Oh, okay. we, got, we got words to stamp, huh? Oh yeah. Thank you. I was admiring the card. I kind of forgot. So what's fun is um, in the stamp set and in the um, sentiment trails, they're all the little fun sentiments. And I have to say, I think these just make the cards so fun. Um, but we've got we and whoosh and let's go. And I feel like I literally can hear the little mice like living their best <laughs> life ever. Um, when I do little stamps like this, I do like to use an acrylic block. My favorite is the Lawn Fawn 1.75. It's the best little block. And if you have little kids, this is a really good block for them because it's like that perfect little. For their size. fingers. He yeah. always wants the biggest block because he wants to put all the stamps at one time. But <laughs> it is good for their little hands to hold. Yep. And we stamped. He grabbed, uh, managed to find two Yeti Set Go stamp sets and put all four Yetis in one big block. And we were camping and coloring those today and so this was his this was his art today <laughs> oh, oh i love it oh my gosh so cute and he colored the yetis over with he always picks the darkest possible marker love it and then we learned how to use a protractor because i have one over here for when oh, we do it and he's like what is this so i was like well <laughs> well let me show you yeah that's great so i stamped whoosh and we and let's go <laughs> so cute it's so, so cute. cute it really is oh my goodness look at this right yay i think this would be, really, I think this would be a cute father's day card the thanks for helping me fly oh for sure mm -hmm. 
It'd also be good if anybody out there is graduating um, from college or anything to give to a professor or a teacher. Um, I didn't even think of that. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do our second card. So we're going to take out that other background um, that we ink blended. And the first thing that I'm going to do is trim it to just be three inches wide. So we're going to, oops, I'm throwing things. Me too. Throwing things <laughs> off camera here. Um, we're going to trim it to be three inches wide. So we're going to keep the length to be five and a half but we just want it to be three inches. So we can cut it however, although I'm noticing I have a little purple ink over here, so I'm gonna cut that off. This is why I sometimes like to trim things down after I've ink blended, because you never know what's gonna happen. I like that sound of that. Right? Sounds the super like efficient. Yeah. <laughs> And then I mentioned in the instructions, I'm using a piece of Spiffy Speckles. This one, is this blueberry smoothie, Kelly? Yes, blueberry okay. smoothie. All right, I, I feel like I should know, but again, I feel like when I'm confident is when I don't know, but yeah, blueberry <laughs> yeah. smoothie, Spiffy Speckles. I love Spiffy Speckles and Watercolor Wishes. I always have them in my stash. Because those of you that were talking about not being able to splatter, all our splattering oh, stuff that's for true. us. Yeah. Yeah. All it's, done. It's done for you, which is nice. And I like that it's got, so the, the back of it has, or in, in the 6 by 6 pad, there's the sheets that have the white, white. with the purple and the purple. This was yep. named after the fact that one time I exploded a blueberry smoothie all over my ceiling. Um, This is like a theme of how I'm a terrible cook. Um, But... Uh, <laughs> And it really did look like, like, just like this. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Cause I mean, cause obviously like blueberry smoothie, like it, it's not blue, you know, but I get it. Blueberries when there's yeah, cause when you make purple. a smoothie with like yogurt and everything, yeah. you know, but that's yeah. a, a funny story. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah. It's funny. Cause it, I didn't, it, what was crazy was, is I didn't leave the lid off or anything, but there was like an air pocket that had formed in it. And when I went to go put the spoon in to like kind of help mix it up to blend it again, the whole like thing popped and it just sprayed everywhere. And I was purple and then the ceiling and <laughs> it was such a mess. I've literally lost my stamping platform. That's what I'm like looking for. Like, I don't even, I don't have words. <laughs> Oh, I put it in my drawer with my card bases, which actually, thank you for reminding me, world, I'll take a card base out, even though this is, <laughs> this wouldn't, in Jen's world, wouldn't make it on a card base. I'll go ahead and put it on a card base. Someone says Shari loves her for Spiffy Speckles. Yes. Yes. I love Spiffy Speckles and Watercolor Wishes. It just, oh, it's the best pattern papers ever. I'm so glad that they're around forever. Well, nothing's forever, but you know what I mean? For a long, 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 long time. Oh, somebody uh, mentioned a lint chocolates and I love those, like the little truffle balls. Oh yeah. Oh, those are good. Those are good. I always have, I hid it from Miles. Where did it go? I always <laughs> have a bag of chocolate chips. This is my like. Oh yeah. You do mm -hmm. always have a bag. Yeah. Filming. But unfortunately my son knows what this is. I might have to change my, because he walks in, he's like, ooh, I want some of that. You'll have to like get maybe a container that doesn't look like it. Like doesn't happen. look, and he'll, yeah. he'll figure it out eventually. You know, I think I get it from my mom because she used to always have a secret stash of hot chocolate chips that she hid from us kids. We'd always find it. So I am going to stamp, um, I just put this in my Misty, and I'm going to stamp your Just Plain Awesome so that it is kind of like centered at the bottom of the yellow panel that we just added to our card. And I just did mine with a block because. You I'm know, a... I normally do if I wasn't on camera. I just get. Like, yeah, it's hard when, yeah. I don't want to have to remake a whole card with you guys watching me. <laughs> but I do. I stamp my sentiments with blocks 
that oh. that'll be your uh, we talked about dreams at the beginning that could be your oh life. yeah that'll be like my nightmare no oh i probably wouldn't remake it i'd probably just keep teaching the card and then be like okay don't do as i do guys <laughs> that's when I cut a sentiment banner and like put it. Yeah, over. that's what the sentiment banners for. Yeah. Someone said that their son had an explosion with an icy machine at 7 Eleven. I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> that's funny. And you're getting a question. Uh, what card stock do you use for your card bases, Jen? Nina 80 pound. Same here. Yeah. I don't wanna I don't wanna bring in another card stock into the mix. I don't wanna have to keep that organized. But I have a whole drawer. Well, I have a drawer over here, which also just shows me why I should not have card bases. But I have a drawer over here with both the orientation of card bases all pre-cut. Again, I get them cut at my local printer. And I just pull them out and fold them and use them. Look at me. All right. So I am going to attach my stuff. And again, I'm going to work from the bottom up again, just because both of these are kind of focused um, around the sentiment. So the two pieces of paper I put down flat with uh, glue tube or dot runner, whatever you want to use. And then I'm going to pop up the little mouse that's folding the paper airplanes over that. And, uh, and then I work coming into the weekend. So I'd love to hear what you guys are doing this weekend. Tomorrow, oh, yeah. tomorrow I am going to Tinker Garden, which is my son's like a uh, little nature, outdoor nature class, uh, which is super cute. So fun. Um, yeah. So we're going to that. And then he always plays with his friend after class at the park. So um, cute. And, um, and then other than that, it's gonna be a nice calm weekend, but I will most likely be coming back here to, to film some more, uh, intro video stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I'd love to hear what you guys are up to this weekend. And what are you well, up to, Jen? You're doing your class, right? I'm going to, yep. Yeah. So Chris and I are going to do that resin class tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. And hopefully I haven't even looked at the weather, but hopefully the weather's nice. And on Sunday we'll go to the beach. Um, It'll be nice to kind of have a weekend where I'm not in the studio. I love being in my studio, but it's nice to get away and do some other things now that the weather is getting nicer. Looks like Shari is doing intro videos as well. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little behind. <laughs> That's the trend. That's what happens because um, Inspiration Week starts on Wednesday, right, Kelly? Starts on Wednesday. I can't believe it. So starting Wednesday, you guys are going to every day we'll have a new new post with new products so every day is almost like a fun little sneak peek so you guys will definitely have to come and and uh see what we've been up to yay and then on release day um just so you guys know on release day we always um release the information for the next create with us it's always on the website uh because i know some of you have found that really helpful to figure out what maybe new goodies you want to get from the release. If you want to create along with us, if you like the cards that we'll be making. Um, so just keep that in mind. The handout is always available and everything is all available during that release day, which is at the 22nd, Kelly. Yes. June okay. 22nd will be our next release. Let's see what people are up to. I love seeing this. Oh, a figure skating competition. I love figure Ooh, skating. Oh, that's fun. I love watching figure skating. Oh, I me too. Figure skate, but I, I, like I pretended like I could. I used to take figure skating lessons because I'm the same age as Michelle Kwan. So like I watched her. I was 13. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, Christy Amaguchi. I saw her in the airport once and I was so excited and I wanted to say hi, but I put that and I chickened out. But well, even I, like Nancy Kerrigan and, um, What's her name? Oh, before, Tanya Hardy. Before the, yeah, before the drama started. And then who was the Russian ice skater? Was it Askana Bayou? Oh, or my, yeah. yeah she, she was so dance. good. I used to love watching because I did dance class. So it was similar. Oh, yeah, I yeah I'm, I'm a terribly awkward person. So I was awful at it. But I was old enough to know I was awful at it. Do you know what I mean? So like, <laughs> yeah. I just doing it because it was fun. Uh, yeah, I just loved it. Oh, I love that. That's so fun. Let's see what else other people are up to. Ooh, someone's going to some museums. That sounds amazing. That's fun. 
And well, uh, real quick before you... the series, I just started succession, succession. I can't say that correctly. Succession. Everyone's been talking about it, so we've only seen one episode. But Ted Lasso ended, so I need a new show. <laughs> Um, um, so just so you guys know, this card, I'm stamping some of the trails directly onto the card. And then I'm also stamping some more like, we and you're so fly, um, little stamps. So go ahead, Kelly. Yeah. We love Erica. So she loves making those. She makes the, I uh, love them. They literally, all the little, yeah, she's got some really good ones and some of these next sets coming up. They're really, yeah, cool. they're so um, fun. Let's see. Someone, let's see what else is. Someone's working on their creative art, art, creative journey art retreat cards. Yay. Love that. Finishing um, high five card gift set or gift box or sister working this weekend. Um, it's going to rain. So people are going to be crafting. Oh, hosting your graduation party. Fun. Oh, how fun. Someone's teaching a resin class. That sounds so fun. Ooh, maybe I'm asking you're gonna be my doing... resin class tomorrow. I know, right? People are asking if we're going to be doing live chat. Yes, we are going to be doing three premieres during the intro week. And I actually have the dates right here. Uh, and we'll be posting the dates, of course. But um, Thursday, the 15th, right, which is my mom's birthday, we'll be doing a premiere um, Friday, the 16th. And then Tuesday, the 20th, we'll be doing YouTube premieres. And what a YouTube premiere is, is while the intro video plays, once it goes live, we live chat. Just kind of how we're chatting here in the text comments. It's not with voice, it's text chatting, but it's just really fun. Um, and so we do that throughout the video um, and it's just a blast. And so we would love if you guys would stop by for those. And once again, we'll be posting that whole schedule um, next week too. So you'll be able to see it there. Somebody just asked, um, can you remind me what your so fly means, please? And yes, um, so your so fly kind of means like you're so cool, um, you're so hip, you're so awesome, all those kind of things. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of funny phrase, but it's it's cute. <laughs> Ooh, Jennifer's making cards for the card swap for the Lawn Fawn event in September. That's Ooh, exciting. I love that. Oh my gosh, I love that you're coming. Ah, oh, it's gonna be so fun. I can't believe I'm gonna get to see some of you guys in person. That is so exciting. I know. People are doing their walk with Jen challenge. Oh, yay. Yep. This is it. Our last two days um, for this last six week step bet challenge. Um, so I've been doing step bet challenges since last July with some breaks here and there. Um, but I think we're going to do a week break and then do another six week challenge. It's honestly the only thing that gets me to get out and move and not sit and work all day. <laughs> Man, I really feel like I should join you. My watch repeatedly told me time to stand throughout this. I, yeah. I've never had, I've never had like, it's an Apple watch. I never had one of these watches before. And it's oh, been yeah. odd to how much I don't walk. And I think part of it to have a toddler and who really is a sit and do puzzles kind of kid. Yeah. So I sit on the floor a lot with him and I just yeah. never realized. And then I craft and I'm on the computer yeah. and it's yeah, it's amazing. Like, and yeah, you should join Kelly. If you have had your watch at least two weeks, it needs like two weeks of data. Oh, and okay. What I love about it is um, not to get into a whole discussion, but what I love about it is everybody's challenge is step challenge is different. So like my friend, Jen, who just had a birthday yesterday, she's super active. So her steps are much higher than mine. But mine are a challenge for me, but they're obtainable for me, you know? And so mm -hmm. that's what I love. And you can even see what your challenge is going to be before you commit to doing the challenge. So, um, and so you have to have two power days, uh, four regular days, and then you have one rest day and you can choose what days you do them. So I love it. I've, it's been super motivating for me. Yeah, I need to. I've been. I, it's hard with a with a kid and work. It's hard. You know, it's hard yeah. to. I just signed up a Pilates place. Just opened Ooh, in my fun. neighborhood, and they had like a special. So I signed yeah. up four classes a month. So that's. Like I was my thinking of doing that to get some stretching in because I feel I like, like that those machine the reformer mm -hmm. machine is really fun. Yeah. Um, and this is a little off topic, but somebody mentioned that Ascana Bayul had a documentary that she loved as a kid. Now I want to look that up. Oh, I yeah, I should look that up. That would be fun. Oh, Kelly Taylor talked about walking in the challenge. It sounds like fun. Yeah, I was excited to see that she joined in this time. 
That's so fun. Oh, and someone says your Thor videos are awesome. I'm so glad you guys are liking those. Thor is the best. Travis is awesome. He comes up with with the the funniest ideas. The bee costume, like oh my gosh, we're all like you don't even understand. We just like cry laughing here in the yeah, office. Like, so we can't get anything done. And the paper airplane thing, like we, we kept like it would like hit me in the head or like we were trying. I missed yeah. catching it. You know, it's just, it's just so fun. I love um, it. Yay. Well, I also just want to um, remind you guys, so if you created along with us tonight and you had uh, some of the supplies that we used in class, I do have an online class that you can sign up for. It's called So Fly. Um, in the summer months, I do a little bit more self-paced online classes. So what that means is you will um, get access to the videos on how to put three more cards together. You'll get access to um, a handout similar to the one that you guys got today, but with different information, different coloring guides, different card ideas. We make three more cards and then you'll get the ideas for two bonus cards. So um, this summer, I actually have three online classes. I have So Fly, which is with the stuff that we use today. And then I have Sweet Bee, which is with the High Five uh, stamp set. And then I did a summer lovin' class, which that is the one that I am going to be teaching live. Um, and it's all my favorite summer oceany sets from Lawn Fawn. So we're using Mermaid for You, On the Beach, Your um, Your Sublime, Dunna, So Jelly. I'm trying to think. I think that's it. I reined it in a little bit, but yeah, so we're going to be doing summer loving. So I'm very excited. I hope that some of you guys will join me for an online class. And it's kind of exciting because if you have UR Sublime in the summer loving class, there is a flip flop for UR Sublime coming out in the June 22nd release. So um, that's pretty exciting too, because it'll give you some more ideas to use with that Yay. Side. Secrets, secrets, secrets. I love it. Oh, yay. I love it. Marcy said she signed up for all three. And then one other quick thing I just want to mention about my online classes when they are um, a brand new class offering like these three, um, Scrappy Chic, which is in Michigan, they do create some class kits, a limited amount of class kits, and they ship them out to anybody in the U.S. that wants to order a class kit from them. So maybe you haven't purchased the uh, the high five uh, supplies yet. You could sign up for class with me for $20 and get a class kit for them. And I believe they're under $20 for the class kits. So really affordable way to kind of treat yourself and take some more online classes. And someone's asking, um, so that means we can do the SoFly class anytime or is it time specific? So it's not time specific in the manner of um, there is no live um, all of my classes, you can take them whenever you want. Um, but because it's a self-paced class, there's no opportunity to join me live for that class. You'll just have access to the videos and the handouts. And that's, I just do that in the summer months. And, um, I usually do that for a Halloween class. Cause I just honestly run out of weekends of all the fun things that I'm offering and doing. Um, but all of my online classes, you can take them whenever you want. You don't have to do them in one sitting. You can do the coloring one day and the assembly the other day. And so that's a super fun, convenient way to be able to take some more classes. Yay. Thanks, Lori, for coming to Papercraft Clubhouse and taking the class with me in person. Yes. And to note, um, you know, we'll be in person in September, Jen, that'll be the first time I'm doing any kind of, well, I guess I don't really teach at that event, but any kind of in-person thing for the first time uh, since, since pre-COVID. So I know um, it's so crazy. So it's going to be exciting to, to see you guys. And, um, and those of you guys, if anyone's coming to that, I, I'm pretty sure uh, Thor slash Travis will be at that event. Oh, good. <laughs> I want to meet him. Good, good, good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and a lot of the other, you'll be able to meet a lot of the other Lawn Fawn crew at that event, um, which is awesome because they're, they're amazing people uh, that work here. So you guys, I know, would love Yay. to meet them. And I know so they work so hard to get all those orders out. I know they're amazing. Um, and someone's asking if we're still sending out birthday emails that her birthday is in June and she hasn't received one yet. I am so sorry that you didn't get your email. We are still sending out birthday emails. And if you guys don't know, uh, maybe um, Shari can link to where you can 
um, sign up for your birthday in your account. You can add your birthday and, um, and we have a little frequently asked questions for it. And you get a coupon code and you get a little free stamp and mini die the month of your birthday. So Josie, please email info at lawnfawn.com to get help um, and to make sure that everything's set up properly and we can get you your code then as well. So Jess will be able to help you out at info at and, uh, and we'll make sure to get you your code. So don't worry about that and make sure that you're all set up in the system. Yay, there's lots of people coming in September. I love it. Yay. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh, and you've never been to California. Well, you're going to be like 20 minutes from the beach. Uh, so uh, you definitely have to go. Uh, you go to Dana Point or San Clemente. And it's just, there's so many cool little beach cities here. Uh, you're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Mike's getting his uh, birthday beaver stamp tomorrow. Yay. Yay. I know we're already working on designing next year's uh, birthday stamp. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> fun. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Oh it was gosh, so fun. Such a blast. It always goes by so quick. I, I didn't even realize what time it was. And I just looked and I was like, wow. Wow. I know. I think that's just crafting. You know, it's like all of a sudden you kind of get sucked into it. And it's so much fun. And it's so fun to get to chat with you guys. So we're just so grateful that you guys have come and hang out with us tonight. And we'll be so excited to see you for our uh, summer release create with us. And we'll be sending out that information soon. It'll be probably in July sometime yeah. um, releases towards the end of June um, and so we'll get that information out to you and then starting on Wednesday June 14th our intro videos are going to be starting our big giveaway post will be that day and then the big release will be June 22nd um, with lots of fun um, summary and birthday kind of themed goodness that I hope you guys are just gonna love <laughs> and, so. summary and summary and summary and yeah. summary and summary. <laughs> <laughs> I always just get so excited for the summer release. <laughs> Oh, someone mentioned they're coming a day early. They could go whale watching. Yes, there are actually really cool in Dana Point. Uh, you can Google it, but there's like, I think there's like Captain Dave's Whale Safari. There's probably other ones too, but you can actually, you go on a boat, you see whales and you you definitely, you don't always see a whale, but you definitely see dolphins. Um, and they have like, you can lay on your belly on the side of the boat and it, it see the dolphins. It's very cool. So there's a lot of fun things to do here. So I hope you guys will <laughs> our little our little section of California here. Yeah. <laughs> And thank you guys so much for your sweet comments and for joining us. And again, whether you're watching us live or you're catching the replay, or maybe this was your first create with us, you can go back and watch all the previous replays and get all the previous handouts. We just appreciate you guys spending some time with us, however that works into your schedule. <clears throat> yes, we appreciate you so much. I'm so glad you guys like the Mice Critters and Shari's amazing bar uh, bar card. B <laughs> that was me putting bear and bee together. <laughs> bee card and bear card. Uh, yes. Oh my gosh, that was so yeah, was cute. So the little cool. bear bum and then you opened it up and all the splattered honey. Oh my gosh, it was so cute. Shari, so you can send me that card if you want. <laughs> That says the girl that's belated and sending her a birthday card. So I shouldn't be asking for cards. Yeah, I'm, I know I need to be better about that. It's always my resolution and I, I never quite, I need to find it. I need to figure out a system. I need a system. <laughs> need that's a system. what we'll talk about the next create with us. We will help brainstorm systems for ourselves to make sure we send cards out. I like that. Ooh, that's a good conversation starter. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, anything else we need to say, Miss Kelly? I don't think so. We're just going to be so excited to start seeing you guys for intro videos and YouTube premieres where we'll do some live chats next week and then the big release on June 22nd. And we'll see you with uh, for Create With Us sometime in July and we'll get that information out to you guys soon. Yay. Well, thank you guys again so much for joining us. We always appreciate you being here with us and taking the time. And again, we can't wait to see you guys post your cards. Use that hashtag LF create with us, all one word, and feel free to tag Lawn Fawn and tag me, Jen Shirkus.